Glad you're not having kids, Johnson. Uh, it's it's something that I, I've that you know I, I've mentioned before on stream where it's like I'm not I'm not sure that I would want kids um, either, um, and it's different for everybody because um, some people know from an early age that they want to have kids or they want to be a parent, and I and I've I've never like had that urge like the desire to you know be a, to be a parent to be a father. Um, it's one of those things where I, it's you know, it's not for everybody, and I feel like I have a lot of ambition for things that I want to do um with you know it's gonna sound silly but things that I want to do with my stream things I want to do with other hobbies um and I don't know if if like if I'd be able to do all the things that I want to do on top of you know doing the whole parenthood thing so it's like yeah I'm not sure if it's for me specifically but when people are planning for it then I'm you know I'm super happy for it. like it's you know I'm I'm there to support my friends or and, and or family that do want to, you know, kind of venture down that path. We've all been scattered to the way. Yeah, it's it's a thing after college, after after people graduate and they're, you know, having families and getting new jobs and growing up. Oh, it's horrible. It's terrible. They need to stay selfishly close to me. No, I'm kidding. I'm, I'm kidding. Oh, Goss is a good name. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. What's up, Shenlong? Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Johnson. I, I think I might have heard you mention before that, yeah, you, you have stuff you have to... Health stuff you have to deal with sometimes. And yeah, that's the other thing, too, is, is yeah, complications and, and uh, potential surprises. Because, you know, rarely is it is it super easy, right? It sounds like work. Yeah. Yeah, it absolutely... I mean, that's the thing. Yeah, it, I mean, child rearing is like a full-time job. And the unfortunate thing, and I, and I think this is the big one, um, I, I, I don't want to, you know, reveal my hand too much, but I'll just say that, you know, Gracie and I have talked about it. And, you know, one of the things we, we've both, I, I, I guess I'll just go ahead and say it, Not, neither of us really want kids, uh, necessarily. Um, cause, you know, because we're engaged, so the conversation has come up. And, um, and that's, that's one big thing, is that right now, at least in the United States, uh, the the model of the United States is more or less welcome to the United States good fucking luck you're on your own and that feels especially true for you know new parents or, or existing parents um like what an what an all it feels like a pretty rough time right now to be raising kids because there's not a lot of resources out there you know for parents or whatnot not a lot of options so um what you were just saying oh god so it's like it sounds like work it's like yeah it would be work it's yeah, like I said. It's it's at least at least one full time job that you're not paid for, and that no one else is going to help out with. Obviously, you know, a pair, uh, you know, a a, uh, a co parenting person, a spouse, what have you, and then other family members can step in. But um, you know, the, the the lack of of like a comprehensive parental leave program, like a federally recognized parental leave program, um, uh, is is disappointing. It's like there, you know, a lot of countries have better systems in place to help out uh you know help with uh new parents or, or just parents in general help with you know things that can that can contribute to raising kids in the united states we just don't do any of that you know it's everyone's just on their own so like if you've got money and resources you're great but if you don't then uh, sorry buddy it's we're, there's really nothing here for you so it's really upsetting so it's like do would I want to take on all that myself, or would I rather spend that energy elsewhere? And I I think I know where my answer is. Hey, what's up, Shenlong? Good to see you, bud. That's right. Yeah, whenever whenever the guard is accosting us, it's not because we've done anything wrong. It's because he's trying to win our hearts. And with a face like this, how could how could he not be drawn to us? Working from home, but it would. Yeah, you're right, Stoats. And and that is one nice thing. That's becoming more of a standard thing. More acceptable. More acceptable, rather. Because, yeah, you know, 10, 20 years or so ago, that kind of thing was unheard of. But that is that is one trend that is helpful, Stoats. You're absolutely right. Yeah, it's good to see you, Shenlong. It's good to see you, bud. Yeah, this is our handsome hero right here. And we are on the road to Kvach, for anybody curious. Because that is the next main quest indicator. In fact, we've got a little... Little GPS plot point right there. A little Google Maps plot point right there. So we're gonna hit that up. I think we might have already been to the cursed mine. I think. We're gonna give it a little look see, just to make sure. It is to my right. 
The fact that it's already on my map makes me think I might have already hit it up. I can't remember because we there's the cursed mine, then there was the the derelict mine, and a few others. So it's like I, I get my curses and derelicts dere, de, my der, der, derelict derelict these nuts. Um, sorry, I had to. I I, I get them confused sometimes. Like I am circling it. I'm circling it like a toilet. Super sad. Yeah, I know. Yeah, your your oh my Jesus was because you were you were spitting with our our hero's sexy sexy self. It's uh the, the thing about this character. Well, a few things. So his name is Sag Maroon, named because when I made this character, I wanted him to be as his, his head to be as round and purple and sad as possible. And I think we got all those properties accomplished. The Goblin Jim- the, uh, yes, Goblin Jimothy. Well, the, the thing is, we, we did conquer Goblin Jim's cave. We, 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 we conquered Goblin Jim and his harem of Goblin Wives. Um, I actually don't think they were- they were Lady Goblins at all, but the- my headcanon is that it was a harem of Goblin Wives we were slaying. So we took care of that, but when I went to the Fighters Guild and like told people about it, there was no quest. In fact, there wasn't even really an option to tell people. It was, they were just like, they were like, yeah, if you want to go Goblin Slaying, there's a place called Goblin Jim's Cave. You could you could go check it out. So, um, it, there was never a quest for it, sadly, but we it was still fun, slaying goblins and turning a harem of goblins into our own harem of girlfriends. Also, yeah, we've we've definitely already been here before. Not sure why it's the breakdown chambers, but the fact that it gives us a full map means we've we've been here before. Oh yes, Dotes, you are 100% correct, and that is the best kind of correct. Let me show you something, because I have been all right. So a few things. So I'm level nine, you know, not not terribly far in the game. Um, not terribly far, but level nine and that we are very much a magic user. Our speed is popping off, but we're very much a magic user based on, you know, the major skills that I picked. So note the destruction is 70. It's pretty good, right? So 70 is like, oh, destruction is your highest skill, right, Alex? Well, it is not. Alchemy, our highest one. And I've been overdosing on making alchemical monstrosities, which is fun. I, I enjoy the monstrosities. So yeah, so yeah, I, I my my more my years with Morrowind have taught me the the importance of of um, going ham on alchemy, and this playthrough is no different. You will steal the hearts of all women and the men too. No one is safe from Sag Maroon's uh, sexy sexy vibes. I got tricked into pro bono goblin slang. Well, that's why my exchange the exchange was you know the harem of goblin wives. Now, that's the- that's my payment. Valuable experience, yeah. Yeah, it was really just them saying like, yeah, if you want- Because there, there was a topic called Goblin Slaying. And there were two places, they were like, hey, you could hit up the Derelict Mine, which we've already been to. And then they were like, oh yeah, or hit up Goblin Jim's Cave. And I was like, cool. So yeah, maybe they were like, yeah, we're not gonna pay this guy. But we're going to hint subtly that if he's an adventurer that wants to do some adventuring, adventuring, that there's a cool place to go to that might have rewards and cool things. Like, we're not going to pay him, but if we just kind of talk about it, I'll be good enough. Excuse me? Oh, this is a bandit. Yeah. Yeah, because we've been here before. And apparently his corpse did not despawn, so he's, he's just vibing. It's a strange place to take a nap. Oh, really, Stoats? Um, I I will. How about this? I will I will inquire about this fun fact later on, because I am curious and I do enjoy some fun like behind the scenes developmenty things. But yeah, later on in in my playthrough, I might I might uh, 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 inquire that from you, my friend. He's no longer a hero; it's their hero. AI scripting with different tribes. Oh, interesting. Okay, yeah, because I know that there are different tribes of goblin. Well, actually, I guess I don't know. I, I think my understanding is that there was originally going to be more like stuff 
with like tribes that would um kind of like vampires in Morrowind where like there were different like vampire tribes and they like had different factions I guess like vampire factions and you could do quests for one but not the other or not the others rather like you know there, there was like a um some competition so to speak so I know there was that in Morrowind and maybe there was something similar here it's remnant yeah I that sounds vaguely familiar I, I think I might have heard somebody say something along those lines that yeah that's like they were originally planning to do more with the goblin stuff and that yeah like you'd be able to um maybe not you the player but there was going to be like interactions with like the different tribes of goblins in some way because again more when you could become a vampire and if you became a vampire then vampire npcs would um i think at least some t it, it at least in some cases or maybe even in all cases would not attack you on site you could actually talk to them and in some cases you could actually join their faction their vampire faction but if you joined one vampire faction you couldn't join the other two and i think the other two might even be hostile towards you maybe i can't remember that detail but yeah there were quest lines there were vampire quest lines that were exclusive to each faction so which really comes down to me saying i don't think it's possible to do all vampire quests in a single playthrough without hack without you know modding the game also babe wake up new dungeon just dropped new firelight cave and look at that it doesn't even have a map entry that's kind of rare in fact why don't you have a map entry it's kind of odd maybe it's like super small that's what, she's, that's what she said. Like, too small to, to make it to be a blip. The design scope, yeah. I was uh, I was watching George. Uh, his name is Zero Zero Period Productions. He is a... Uh, we, we have a number of mutual friends. He, he, we, we've raided each other a number of times. He's a cool dude. And he is a Bethesda game specialist. In fact, he's on the official Bethesda stream team. And he's very knowledgeable. He is extraordinarily knowledgeable and plays a lot of Fallout, a lot of Elder Scrolls, and, you know, Soulsborne and other stuff, too. He's not just Bethesda, but, like, he is... His knowledge is shocking, appalling, offensive. No, not really, but, it, yeah, he's he's a, he's a smart guy and a very well-informed guy. And he was telling me how one time he had read that in the development for this game, during the development for this game, um, once again, Bethesda was very ambitious, and they had a lot of cool ideas with things that could be done for the for like ai uh npc interactions and one of the things that they initially had planned was to have something along the lines of uh like a priority list of of things an npc would want to do so like and it would depend on a few things it would depend on their personality that they were assigned or it would depend on their skill set or their npc class as you know as a player you have classes like mage or or fighter or or wizard or or bard rogue all that jazz but then there's like npc classes so like bookseller or or um or trader or or armorer or or pauper you know or a beggar that kind of thing um so it's like so they, they would have like tasks assigned to the NPCs and they would like have priority lists and so like say if you're a farmer if you're the NPC is a farmer then they would be inclined to farm for things you know they wait they would get up at a certain time of day go grab their farming tools and then go to you know their assigned fields and start doing things well the problem during development and I don't know how much of this you know was was ever translated into the game we have today but but um but the way the, the way the story at least goes is that early in development they what they accidentally did was they made those kinds of tasks too high in the priority lists like higher than following laws so for instance if uh, use the same example there's a farmer npc and their their priority list says you should farm that's what you that's like you're a farmer you should farm so the npc 
the AI, the AI or the algorithms would tell the NPC, okay, step one, um, w wake up at this time of day or, you know, exit your house this time of day. Step two, gather farming equipment. Well, what if they didn't have farming equipment? Like, what if the developer or level designer forgot to put farming equipment in their inventory? So they would go to look for some. So they would, like, just wander to the nearest city. And then they would just, like, break into someone's house and then steal uh, steal their farm equipment, or they would see somebody with farm equipment in their, in their inventory and assault them to try to kill them. Also, speaking of killing things. So, like, during dev builds, or, like, you know, test builds, they would just, they would, uh, they, they would just see NPCs fighting each other for seemingly no reason. They were like, what the fuck is going on? And eventually they figured out, oh, it's because, yeah, they're trying, their priority list is out of whack. They're trying to kill each other for their equipment so they could fulfill their tasks. So... Uh, again, I don't know how much of that was that you know was was resolved in such a way that reflects in the current game, but I think that's fucking hilarious. The idea of like, man, I want to farm stuff so bad. You see a, a guy with a shovel, you're like, you motherfucker. I guess not a shovel, but like a, a hoe. Like you motherfucker, let's go, let's throw down. Shit's hilarious. It's an exit. Oh, thank you, Stoats. That's a good point. We have seen that before. Going to, I'm going to the back door. That's right, oh guys. So, hey, what's up, Cody? Good to see you, bud. Might be a stretch to get. Oh, I do know of one thing. I, I and I guess this is a slight spoiler. Um, the name of the game Oblivion is relevant. Is uh, is is indicative of the fact that there are Oblivion gates. And I I remember somebody telling me if you fight the final boss before you close all the Oblivion gates you know, venture into and then close out all the Oblivion Gates, then you, then it will, like, auto-shut the Oblivion Gates for you, and you will not be able to explore them on your own. And apparently the Oblivion Gates are really cool. Like, apparently they are metal AF and are worth exploring. It's the idea of missing out on those. You know, you get the FOMO, right? It's like, ah, oh, shit, I wanted to try those out. So, I, I remember one person saying, you know, slight spoiler, eh, not really, but, but yeah, just, if you want to do a full, or at least a pretty comprehensive playthrough, then that's something to be mindful of. So, and I don't mind that. I don't mind a spoiler like that, because it's not really a spoiler. I, yeah, Oblivion Gates, like, that makes sense. That's It's in the name of the game. I'm not spoiled, it's fine. But, yeah, that was one thing others have told me about, yeah. In fact, yeah, that might have been a Stoats, a Stoats tip. Stoats gave me hashtag just the tip. Stoats, your tips feel, your, your tip feels the best out of all the tips I've received. Yeah, you won't get to after a right, yeah. Out of all the tips I've received, Stoats feels the best. What's up, with a level 98 wizard? Yeah, I've heard they're pretty sick. I've heard they are, there's like cool stuff, there's cool gear, terrifying monsters, and just, it sh like, just shit looks cool as fuck. So I'm excited. It's called Oblivion. Because they were oblivious. Oh my fucking god. Nitro, it almost makes me wonder if there's some kind of, like, if there's some kind of greek or latin root of the word oblivion and oblivious like there that, that has to be a, a common link right maybe like oblivion means like if the suffix obliv if there's like a lack of something you know it's like so I, i'm i'm spitballing here but what if if the if the if the prefix ob obli or obliv um would mean something like a lack of something, and then like the I eon or ion suffix would be like a, a land or an area, that I, or or a, or a or a place. Then I guess I could see that. And then us I U S would be like the state of being, because you know if you're oblivious, you're you're you're, you know the your perception of something has been missed, or you know you've you've passed something by. Oh, what am I doing? I don't I don't have a uh, spell for this. Whereas Oblivion is usually like a, a, a state of nothing, you know, a, a not good thing. I, I took a class in college about Greek and Latin roots, and um, it was interesting. And it was a lot of memorization, which I didn't love, but I did find it like, did kind of train your brain, help to train your brain. When you see a word, you don't and you don't necessarily know its meaning, but you can kind of maybe piece together what it might mean, kind of, sort of. And you learn a little bit about how language works, you know, prefixes and suffixes, that kind of thing, just to, in a more general sense, you know, syntax. And syntax is something I use all the time in, uh, as a software developer, so 
it was, it was, a, it was a cool class, and it was taught by a very cool dude. I, I like that professor who taught that a lot. Spark Tome. I think I already have that spell. I'll still grab it, though. Mod to play through Cody. Hell yeah, man. 10,000. Dude, Cody, you're a badass. Holy shit. Cody, I think that makes you a licensed Oblivion expert. That's amazing, man. Forgetfulness. Okay, so... Interesting, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. That, make, that makes sense. So yeah, yeah, it's like the, the state of like a forgotten realm or something. It, when it is pa oh, okay, yeah. So more in a, in a literal sense, but still, yeah. That's a good one, Stoats. That's some good shit. Did you just know that off the top of your head, Stoats? Or because or, I, I, that's the kind of thing I would have to look it up. But I was like, damn, that's that's like pretty pretty on the nose, man. I really remember Jackal. J A C L. I'll confess, I actually don't know what what that means. What that is? J A C L. Is that like a is that a, a quest in this game or a, or like a one of the DLCs? Yeah, I think I already have Spark. Target. What do I have right now? I have that. I think I've been using this. Yeah. Okay. So it's a cheaper version of this guy. So that's fine. I'll add it to our list. Anything else here? Cast shield every so often. Partly to get that alteration skill up. You major pro. I, I, I don't know, man. 10,000 hours, man. I'll, I'll see this much. I have a little bit less than 10,000 hours. In fact, here I can get to the exact number. Oh, except no, I can't because I, I don't have a mouse cursor. Um. Yeah, unfortunately. Right, wait, hold on. I can shift tab or yeah. Can I do the Steam overlay? Maybe. Yes, I can do it this way. Here we go. I know you can't see this, but I can just check myself before I wreck myself. Oop. Here we go. So I'm at 55 hours. 55 total hours with this game. So you've got a little bit of a leg up on me. Just a little bit. I'm catching up to you, though. I'm nipping at your heels, bud. Now, 10,000 hours, man, that, that's that's impressive. I mean, I I consider myself a pretty well-traveled lad in Morrowind, and I've got maybe 400 hours, maybe 500 across all of my playthrough. Well, yeah, we'll say somewhere between, probably somewhere between 500 and 600. I think the first, like, three or 400 is tracked in Steam, but I, I, I played it before Steam was a thing, so hard to know the full hours. In 500 to 600 hours in something. That's a lot. That's a, you know, a, a significant chunk of my life dedicated to a piece of software. But, but yeah, that's relatively, yeah, like it pales in comparison. 10,000 hours. That, that to me is, is someone who is very dedicated and knows their shit and, and like believes in, you know, in the game and, and is like passionate about it. I, I love it, man. I, I love hearing stuff like that. It's so cool. Also, it's a sick backflip, by the way. That was locked in memory, Stoats. That's the thing about Stoats, man. Stoats is one of these dudes where he, he's a fellow software developer, he's a fellow gamer, but then, then he'll surprise you with like seemingly random esoteric stuff where he's like, because Stoats, um, I don't know if you still do it, but I know for a little while there, you were getting really into book binding. You know, like, like, uh, like, uh, book, uh, like binding, uh, like covers to books. Uh, as, as a craft. Somebody just gave me the zappies. Who, who, whomst, whomst would give me the zappies like that? Somewhere up top. So yeah, so, so when Stoats hit me with the Latin root summary, I was like, I was like, if it were just about anybody else, I would be suspicious that they looked, that they looked it up themselves, but I was like, I bet Stoats just had that in his brain. Cause he's the kind of guy that would just, ha he would just pipe up and like, raise his hand in the back of the class like, oh, I know this. It's like, really? You, you know this just for, for no reason? So it's like, yeah, yeah, I, I just know this. And then he would say, be like, fuck, he's right, yeah. Like, it's like, you like you look up, you look it up on your phone, you're like, yeah, he's he's fucking right somehow, against all odds. Man's a fucking legend. 
Oh, you meant Jack. That's okay. I thought like J-A-C. I thought it was like an acronym. Like Justice and Closure League or something. I don't know. Like if there was like a... Because there's uh, a bunch of DLC or expansions, I guess. In this game. Or if there was like a faction that I'd never heard of. I don't know. Like what does J-A-C mean? As many hours on Fallout Gate. Dude, that's so cool. I love it. I, I love hearing that kind of passion, man. For a specific game or a specific series. Like, I, I, I've mentioned before, I think if I had to pick or, or guess one game I've spent the most time with, it would... It's hard to know because, like, you know, again, it's like a lot of these games came out well before Steam and tracking of hours, but I think the game I've played the most out of all my years would probably be Diablo 2. And not because I ever played it like uninterrupted for months on end but just because it's a game i always come back to well i guess i haven't come back to in a couple years but um it's a game i frequently find myself coming back to so it's like you know i'll, I'll play for like i'll do like i'll put like a 50 60 hour playthrough in you know for you know and then a year or two later do the same thing year or two later come back to it so it's like just over it, it since the game came out in like 2001 it means that over the years i've i've just regularly plotted time to it also yeah i think i have to just go back because i don't think there's a way to go back up to go up here but sadly there's no levitation in this game as much as i love uh or not so much as much as i love it's that i do love me my morrowind and i love my morrowind levitation spells so the lack of it in this game means oh we're kind of we're kind of railroad here so i gotta go back developer and writer uh, cody that'd be awesome man I, um, there's a number of, uh, mod makers that I follow on Twitter, you know, social media and whatnot, where they've, like, they, they got their start making mods for games, and then that kind of was, like, a, a gateway drug, if you will, that led them into, like, full-on game development, like, working on their own projects, or, like, joining development teams, so, like, and for so many of them, they started with Morrowind, or Oblivion, or Skyrim, you know, like, modding for games like that, so, uh, so it's, it's interesting that there's, like, kind of a community of devs and like game game dev people that yeah got their start with the games like this and and being involved with them stoats is more knowledge I, i'm i'm interested stoats yeah i'd be curious book binding leather you see you see stoats you're you're what we refer to in the industry as a renaissance man stoats will you know he'll go to his nine to five he'll do his software development then he'll come home he'll do some leather binding then he will practice his 13th century loot lessons. And then he will uh, hop on his horse that he owns and go and go horseback riding and do some archery wal waltzed horseback riding. And then he will um, teach it. Then he'll practice his juggling for a couple hours, you know, for an hour or so. And then he'll t and then he'll teach his tap dancing class. And then before bed, he relaxes with a um, with a uh, with by by watching YouTube videos about um, 18th century uh, Latin poetry. So that's that's Stoats's life in a nutshell. Is that a structure I should be know knowing about? What structure is that? It's a structure. I don't know. I see walls and I get excited. It's good enough for me. What's a puzzle? Good to see you, friend. Got a game written out, just not sure about the coding part. I mean, that's the thing for for a lot of a lot of devs or, or just game designy game designy or developery people. It's hard to do all of that by yourself, because you know a person who's really good at coding might not be the best at writing or designing or you know kind of the idea stuff, the, the like high level stuff, and then vice versa. Somebody who has like big ideas might not really have the confidence on the uh, like the technical side, you know, the, the coding side. So that's where, like, you know, development team can be helpful. So, yeah, it's like you might be able to find like-minded people who, where it's like, you know, we, your skill set would complement someone else's to, like, make a project a reality. It can be hard sometimes to find those kinds of people, but but I, I've definitely seen that kind of thing where, like, someone says, oh, yeah, I've got a good story. I just need a good developer. And then a developer's like, man, I got good, good, good coding skills, but I don't have any cool, you know, projects to work on or things to implement. So sometimes it works out that way. Diablo 2, yeah. 
The World of Sanctuary. Well, of course, there's the the re remastered, remade, remastered edition. I'm ki I'll be honest. I'm kind of loath to give Blizzard any money anytime soon, just because they've been so fucky over the past year or so. But, um, but yeah, I mean, there's there's more Diablo things I would like to experience. I just know I don't know if I can bring myself to you know buy remastered edition or Diablo 4 for that matter when it comes out. So I don't know. May maybe I'll you know change my tune at some point. Been unpleasant. He's a he's got a potpourri of random fucking notes. You're correct. That is, that's that's Mr. Stoats in a nutshell. That one percent can be it can it can come in real handy. You never know. I'm, and the other thing too is like, it, you know, people might laugh at this, but it's like that that's the kind of th those kinds of like random knowledge things or random skill sets specifically like random um like actionable skills put that shit on a resume right like keep like put that shit on your linkedin because you never know you never know when that will like benefit you professionally and i'm not trying to say like oh you should only pursue skills like that if they're going to benefit you professionally but it's like you know it's a factor to consider it's a factor to consider and if you're doing them then it's worth it, doing them anyway it's worth you know, you know propping yourself up be like yo check this cool thing i did because i'm a fucking gamer and i'm a boss a good power to have archery and hunting that's the thing you, you might have thought to yourself oh alex is just being silly talking about learning how to juggle in 18th century latin poetry didn't you but little did you know that 40 percent of the things i said were completely true seek its conjured weapon and armor i'm gonna say not now because i think that is like a limited or maybe not limited use but when i use it it will at least not be active again for a while So I remember using it, and then it, like, winked out, and I was like, oh, I didn't want to use it now. I, I should have saved that. Kind of magic. Of course, I know our sword needs to be recharged. Rechargeified. Archery. I've... The only archery I've done is was in, like, high school. You know, in, in PE class. Doing, um... Uh, I, I, guess, I guess you would still call it archery, but you know, like, on, on, like, using, like, uh, I mean, the, the, the arrows were still, you know, could still be potentially dangerous if fired at a live target, but not meant for hunting at all, just for target practice, you know, that kind of stuff. Should we get at static targets? Fort Isterius. How Mysterious. Got a lot of, a lot of game ideas, Cody. That's impressive, man. That's impressive. Some people just got there, man. Some people are just idea guys. You know, some people just are, uh, like, they got, they're very good at coming up with, kind of, like, high-level cool shit. I thought it was a bed. It's an altar. There's nothing in the altar. I thought it was like, oh, God, am I going to, like, drive to, drive, do I have to bring 69 maidens here and, and have sex with them on the altar? One after the other? Poor me. Poor me. How will I manage? Skyrim together, I've heard quite a lot about it, actually. I've never... So, confession time. Played a lot of Morrowind, and this is my first Oblivion playthrough, but I've never played Skyrim. So if I if I were to, to stream or, or even play Skyrim, I would probably... I would probably want to do the single-player stuff first, you know, the, the standard stuff first, and then jump into the multiplayer or, 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 like, modded stuff. So, probably none of that anytime soon, but... The fact that it's out is really cool because I know it's been in development for a long time and a lot of people have been, correctly so, very excited about it. So I'm, I'm curious, but I'll probably hold off myself. Ooh, Stoats has got a video for us, by the way. Well, let's do this. Let's save real quick because I when I alt tab, I'm I what I might even do is just close the game. And then I'll relaunch it. When I relaunch it, will probably give me a mouse cursor. Because right now, I, I, I have the mouse cursor in-game, but the cursor is locked in the game, and I can't actually move it outside to the other windows. So I'm going to save real quick. I was thinking earlier, uh, pursuant to the conversation earlier about, you know, being uncertain about future family planning things. You know, some people, when they are 
we lads and ladies, they think to themselves at an early age, like, oh yeah, I, I can't wait to have kids. And then there's other people where it's like, no way do I ever want kids. And there's people like myself where it's like, I, I, I'm not sure, you know, I'm not sure if it's something I would, I would want. But I also don't want to say like, I don't want to like say no way, no how, because what if I change my mind? But, at least here in the States, the United States, there's been, you know, stuff happening. For better or for worse, and I have I have my opinions on the matter, and I, I should maybe not, you know, be I sh maybe I shouldn't you know show my hand too much. But there have been, uh, we'll just say developments over the past couple weeks that have been, uh, to to, I guess maybe some percentage of the population they're very excited, and then to others, were maybe less excited about things that have happened over the last last few weeks, and um. And I've had some conversations with friends where it's like, oh, based on certain happenings, maybe, you know, like, you know, like they were talking to their spouse or their, or their, you know, their wives or, or, or their girlfriends, what have you. And it's like, oh, maybe, you know, I should look into getting a vasectomy, you know, for, for, for friends of mine where it's like, they don't want to have any more kids because they've already had, you know, they already have two or three. It's like, whoa, you know, I can't really afford any more or just, you know, they're taking, take, they're taking control of their own family planning. You know, they're, they're, they're wanting to, um, you know, to be the ones to, to, to call the shots, you know, for, for what they want to pursue in their lives, that kind of thing. Per, you know, well, it probably doesn't take much to figure out how I feel about these things and, and my opinions on the matter, but I'll just say I'm in support of people, you know, being in control, individuals being in control of these things. But and I was talking to one of my, one of my buddies. He was like, "Yeah, man, I'm, I'm thinking. You know, me and the wife were talking, and we've already got enough. You know, we we have the number of kids we wanted, and things are scary. So, you know, thinking of my, he, he was saying he might uh, try for a vasectomy. But he was also saying like, but the thought of you know anything sharp getting near there is uh, like get a little squeamish about it. And I was thinking about it. I was like, yeah, it would make me squeamish too, honestly. Um, but I, but I came up with an idea. I was like, all right, how's about this? You and I were gonna go into. We've, I'm gonna, we're going to start a business, all right? Now, me nor this person are doctors, are, are medical professionals. And you know any business idea that begins with somebody saying, Now, I'm not a doctor, but... Now, I'm not a medical professional, but... You can rest assured that anything that escapes my lips after that sentence, it's only going to be good. So, I'm not a medical professional, but... Here's my million dollar idea. So, you know, here in the United States, things are fucked. Th things are kind of fucky. And you don't want to have any more kids or you don't want to have kids at all, etc. Uh, but the idea of a, of a vasectomy is scary because, you know, sharp things near genitals. Ugh. Can't say I blame you. It would make me uh, too. Also, I'm looking to see if I can jump on this, but I don't think I can. I'm like stuck. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to establish. Oh, 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 it's almost a gamer. We're going to establish a network. Of now, who would perform a vasectomy? Would that be a? I know urologists. Urologists sometimes involve themselves with that part of the body. We'll, we'll just say, yeah, a, a, a doctor. You know, some some doctor. We'll establish a network of doctors that will where it's like you can you can pay them a flat fee, and you here's what's gonna happen. You would you would pay them money. And then you would give them a key to your house. All right? I, just follow me through on this, all right? You give them a key to your house. You tell them your sleep schedule. And, you know, days when you will or will not be present in your abode. And you... And, and any other relevant things. You know, if there's if you have a security system. Uh, if you, you know, an, an alarm that goes off, that kind of thing. Man, I got up there at one point. Basically, I'm looking to see if I can get up there. It might not be anything. Look around at it this way first. You give them a key to your house. You give them, you know, passcodes to get past security things. Um, and you basically trust them to ethically break into your house while you're sleeping. And not wake you. That part's key. So you're still asleep. They break into your house. And they, um, they just take care of business. You know, while you're asleep. While you're already asleep. You know, they, they would probably do whatever magic I guess the maybe the answer is yeah you need like some kind of numbing agent some kind of way to make sure that they don't wake up during the process but the idea is that they 
ethically break in your house while you're sleeping and give you the old snip snip while you're still asleep. And then when you wake up, you'll wake up with an ice pack upon your nether regions. And you, you look to your bedside table. There's a little post-it note with a smiley face. It's like, it's a smiley face, but the smile is on the tip of a little, it's like a little, it's like a little, little pe uh, well, no, it, it, I guess it'd be like a testicle shaped smiley face with a with little, you know, little eyes, a little smile, a little note that says like, uh, you know, avoid, he you know, avoid lifting heavy objects for the next, you know, week, you know, just take it easy for a bit champ. Um, and just taking care of it for you that way, that way. So you're never, you were never any of the wiser. As I was thinking about that a lot when I was queuing up for my surgery, uh, for my my for my on my thrusty on my throat, I remember thinking like, yeah, why can't why can't I just pay them to break into my house into my condo, and perform the surgery while I'm already asleep, on my throat on my thrusty. That way I could just wake up and I would just see a little note pinned to my chest that said, just don't talk for a few days, champ, and eat lots of ice cream, king, and you know just they're they've already taken care of it for me. Like, why can't that be a thing? So, I'm applying that same methodology to people who are squeamish about, you know, sharp objects near the nether regions, as they're warranted to. Oh, shit. I just turned the corner. There's a lady. We summoned Zambonis. I'm trying to kite this motherfucker so I can zap her. Yeah, yeah, you're much more exciting. You get out of the way. I don't want to fight. I, have, I don't want to trifle with you, zombie mans. I'd rather trifle with this lady. Oh, she healed herself. What a what a nerd. Now, can I block those kinds of spells? I think the answer is probably not. Oh, do you like how she opened the door and the, and her homies could not save her? Is she a vampire? No, she's a necromancer. Um, these aren't very good. Yeah, I guess I'll, I could sell that one. The robe looks badass though. Look at the skull. Oh, that's sick. I like the skull. Yeah, it's, that's dope. I mean, I think if, we, the thing is, I think if we, we wear robes, it goes, it replaces our armor. So I don't think I really can wear, I mean, I could, but I think... It wouldn't really make sense for us to wear the robes. That's tempting though, it's so cool. But yeah, I, I think we've tried this before though, because we saw robes that had like cool effects on them. But yeah, they we couldn't wear that plus our armor. We could wear greaves. We could wear a helmet, but we couldn't wear like the the cuirass. Speaking of armor, I know we were getting fucked up a little bit earlier. So 82, that's not too bad. Yeah, yeah, so this would get removed. Like, as, as cool as it would be. As cool as it would be, it's a probably, probably a no-go. Is there anything else that I missed along the way? I know I, yeah, I think it was right, right when you turned this corner. And she was using a plain old iron mace. So she went ahead and opened this door for us. I suppose I might as well be a good boy and see it all the way through. Oh my. So that person saw me instantly. Fellow necro friend, necromancer friend. So that one appears to be stuck. So she doesn't really want to engage too much. Oh, nah, she's engaging. She's gonna try to heal. There she goes. Yep, I knew it. Is that her summoning something? It is. Bam! That is very satisfying. Landing a killing blow on somebody with a spell and watching them like get blasted back. I like this game a lot, and there are, I mean, there are things that I, that I miss about Morrowind, and I invoke the game's name quite frequently when I play this, but there are many things I do like about this game, and yeah, like, the, the physics-y part is fun. 
watching things, watching how the, the, the physics interact is very fun. I also was thinking about this earlier. I really like how you can, you can block or at least do some blocking with any weapon. Because in Morrowind, you could only block with a shield. You know, there was no parrying mechanic or anything like that, so. That being in this game makes me happy. And you can level up the block skill without using shields. Now, granted, shields are more effective. Especially when your block skill is, is pretty leveled. But still, it's... It's nice having that option. Now in the meantime, two necromancers down, with presumably more where that came from. Which means I should- oh, speak of the goddamn devil. Also in Morrowind, I remember there were times where I would, ouch, cast a projectile, and then the bad guys would cast a projectile spell. And they would, like, cancel each other out. Oh, man, I'm missing left and right. I don't think that really happens in this game. I remember that would sometimes get frustrating. This guy's a lot of mana. Or he's drinking the juice. Man, I, I think I hit this man once. He is so wild. And he's hit, he's hit me, like, four times. He's very squishy, though. Just healed. Like, he was just backing up. Backing up slowly, never drew a single weapon. I think I had a, either a fuck ton of mana or a fuck ton of potions, because, yeah, he... He was landing every shot. Oh, Zambino hand. Hit or miss. I guess he never missed. Alright, so no bad guys nearby, allegedly. Although... More doors to check out. So he had... Yep, mana potions. Yeah, never drew his weapon. They all had matching ropes, though. And I'm jealous. Kind of jelly in GL, not gonna lie. Um, Alright, Sanctuary. So yeah, there's... There's more... That's a, that's a new instance. But there was another door. That I've yet to explorificate. So I want to go this way first. Then we'll delve into the sanctuary. Sanctuaries, plural. And we're full health. I'm sneaky. I'm a sneaky boy. So yeah, so yeah, trap there. You know this place is cool because they've got skulls on tables for seemingly no reason. Now, what's that trap guarding, pray tell? It's a person. Oh, it's a chest. Although, I can reach it from here. Although, only barely. I guess I've got long, gangly arms that can reach all the way across. Oops. Oh man, I only have 91 lockpicks left. Whatever am I gonna do? And eventually... Eventually we're gonna get the, hopefully, we'll get the additional lockpicking spells. Because right now we have open very easy and open easy lock. Eventually we'll find open average. Probably open hard and very hard. So eventually we won't need lock picks. Um, I would take all these. I think we might already have an Alembec. An apprentice Alembec. Let's find out. Taking the, that's right. That's what I, 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 I recognize that the way I play this game might be frustratingly slow to some. Because yeah, I, I'm... Very much slow and steady. With the intention of winning the race. Um, oh, book. We just got a book. Spark Tome. What about Spank Tome? Frost Shell. Is that Frost Shield? It is. 
Ultra Oh, I guess that makes sense. Alteration, yeah. That's pretty good, actually. 10%, that's not bad. Not half bad. Stoats, what's your preferred class when you play this game? Actually, I'll, I'll pose that to anybody. If you have a preferred class or, like, character archetype that you're a fan of when you play this game. Maybe not even archetype, but just, yeah, like, skill sets and whatnot. Is my guy... Let me show you. He is blade and light armor, and then the rest is all spellcasting. So, I guess, I guess you could say... Kind of battle mage, kind of sorta. It's battle mage because of destruction, but then there's like other mage things. Alteration, restoration, mysticism, so... There's other stuff. Also, my mysticism is... surly underutilized. Absorb, reflect a spell. Move. Yeah, I don't, I don't do any of that. I, I don't know, that, those are things you don't do all that often, honestly. I guess absorb, you can do with, you know, like, absorb health, that kind of stuff. And maybe I should seek out those spells more often. In fact, what absorb things do I have? Uh... Oh, this one. So I do have absorb... Oh, it's on touch. It's only five points. Yeah, so I would need, like, the good. That good, good. Oh, but absorb health is restoration. Oh, shit. Well, never mind. Do I have anything that is mysticism, then? I have a lot of alteration there. Okay, there, just spell other. I don't have a lot of illusion. Of course, I, that's not one of my main skills, anyway. I feel like I'm all alteration. Major dispel. Detection, though. Oh, that's not a bad... Hmm. Protection, yeah. So there's some conjuration. Telekinesis, yeah. yeah. These are things I don't really use. It's a shame that absorb health. I guess I could like... What about absorb magicka? I guess that could be something. Because, yeah, if I could, like, sap other... Of course, it costs magic to, to spend a spell like that. But still, that could be nice for fighting mages. Drain their juice. Battle mage, yeah. It's a good combo. Yeah, it makes sense. It makes sense that it's restoration. I could see it going either way. So, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not bothered, but it is like, ah, oh, shucks. That'd be an easy one. Healing spells used to be necromancy. Yeah? Yeah? The overlap is... Not two circles. It is... There is some overlap. Sneak attack. I know there is no sneak attack for spells, but still. If I say it's... If I... If I say sneak attack... Then maybe it'll be true. Yeah, stand in front of your homie. God damn it. I was doing so good earlier. And now I'm like missing all the shots that I do take. Michael Scott, Wayne Gretzky. Entropic Bolt. I mean, some of that's just kind of okay. Oh, that's developer consoles. Like, what did I just press? Was anything else back this way? Nope. And this person also wearing the same garb as her necromancy brethren. Yep. Yet yeah, same same cloak, same same uh, icon sigil rather on her cloak. So if you've happened upon a necromancer's sect or a necromancer cult. Whenever I say the word sect, I feel like I'm that people will think I'm trying or about to say the word sex. And then I think to myself, now what would freaky necromancy necromancer sex look like? And then I th and then 
and then I become like afraid, and then and then my brain goes to places and I go, ugh, ugh, don't like that. Nope, don't like that. Freaky well, necromancer sex. I mean, as long as that's all it is, I guess that's fine. But you know, I, I don't want. I don't really want to think about the kinds of things necromancers would be inclined to introduce in the bedroom. There was that one NPC that we met uh, a few sessions ago in the land of... What was that one town? Skingrad. In Skingrad, there's that one Dunmer lady. And she's like, oh, asking for a friend, by the way. What is... How illegal is... is um, necrophilia. Like what's like what's the uh, what's the fee I would need to pay if I if I practice necrophilia, and then our answer was well is it your first time offense and she says let's say hypothetically no and then we give the answer and she goes wow that's so much lower than I thought it would be thank you and then she's got a big smile on her face and we're over here like oh my god so that kind of energy also robo deflection. Very valuable. But again, I think this will not... I don't think we can wear this and our armor at the same time. Maybe I'm wrong. Dude, it makes our neck stick out like a sore thumb. Like a sore purple thumb. Resurrection by... That's incredible, Stoats. I'm I'm aware of Power Wolf, but I was not aware of that song name. That makes me very happy. But yeah, there it is. See, we would lose our armor. Although, although, look at that. Look if you look right here, we actually lose armor. Oh, it's because the shield. That's why we're losing armor when we wear this armor. Oh, not uh, this one. This one, rather. If we wear this one... Oh, look at that. It, it goes down even more. So my, my theory at first was that our armor is pretty damaged. 78%, so it's, it's getting down there. But I think if it was fully repaired, it would be about the same. It would be about it would be about 21 so really this would be the better choice in fact if we could find things that gave more shield percentage as a constant effect we'd be in even in more business as ridiculous as we look i mean it, it, in a good way but you know i think i actually will stick with this one. Oh, we lost our oh we lose our greaves too oh we lose our agility then too oh that's a shame yeah, I... Oh, oh, there we go, there we go, 21. So... It's it's the same. Okay, so you lose your grief. I didn't realize you lose, you lose your greaves. We're out, here, we're out here not wearing pants. Yeah. Because I was about to say, I like the health, the health 15. And here I like the agility. And then it keeps our armor. So never mind, we'll just sell this. But that's good to know. If we could find a robe that gives... Or something. A robe that gives some other constant effect that's very good. It could outdo the gains we have here the downside though is that if we do relinquish armor like this it means it's slower to level our armor our armor skills and those skills for light armor that is is one of our major skills so that's that's like a, a key vehicle for leveling up so it's something we don't want to uh don't want to slack on hey what's up mon scott thank you but for, for joining in buddy and Monscott, you're don't let's not you know let's not mince words. You're a fellow charity sexy gentleman yourself, so let's not uh, let's not let's give credit where credit is due. It takes one to know one. I'll say that much. It's good to see you, bud. Yeah, Monscott's a fellow extra life charity lad. Could play it on stream, Stoats. Yeah, I'd be down. Or if you want, you could always just send it to me, and I I could just listen to it off stream. 
But yeah, for listening to it all in stream, yeah, we would we would need to do the the, the uh, unless it was like a real short like thirty second clip or something. Enchanting stuff, yeah, I enchanting stuff is just like in Morrowind. It's a real good way, or finding enchanted stuff is a real good way to soup yourself up. Either having the money and resources to do it yourself, or finding the cool shit in dungeons, or or knowing what dungeons have like the really cool equipment. Um, the barracks. Yeah, in Morrowind, yeah, like, obviously leveling up your stuff, getting good stats, that's all great. But yeah, once you start finding, like, the top tier equipment, get the legendary items that launches you into the stratosphere. And I imagine it's similar in this game. Because, yeah, shield's really good. The fact, the fact that we found a robe that, at least from an armor perspective, matches two sets of armor, or two pieces of armor... Like, that's insane to me. 5% shield, constant. From a defense perspective, matches, well, albeit very damaged, two pieces of armor. Uh, well, actually, no, the, I think these numbers are still reflected. So I think f a total of five armor points. So maybe that 5% more or less equates to five armor points. 21, 21. So, like, to me, that is indicative of how good of an effect shield is and how I should every so often be casting my shield spell because you might think it's fairly meager but that's no small matter I'm gonna do a quick little autosave before I jump into here check out the barracks hey what's up white flare you're correct yeah we have uh this is our our handsome hero get him real close you can really drink him in drink him in because he's grape flavored Somebody said he looks like a bruised tomato. And he's not wrong. I Apologies to anybody. I, I know you've probably heard me say this a million times. But I always love saying how when I made this character, my goal was to make him look as his face look as round, large, and sad as possible. And I, th I think we succeeded. And that was reflected in the name. His name is Sag Maroon. And I think we did a pretty good job. He also has a very commanding underbite, and uh, El Gasso and myself and a few others have agreed that the the noise that I, that I at least hear in my head when I look at his face is like he's just sad all the time. I'm on an adventure. He's like he's just having a not good time. Speaking of not having a not a good time, can I get my weapon out? Thank you. I'm getting the shit kicked out of me a little bit here. There we go. And of course, he is hella weak. He was spell casting, so although I am hella almost dead. One more casting, he's done. You know, I'm just gonna close the gap. I was gonna say, it's getting close, but I bet I can take his ass out. I knew he was getting down there, but I was like, okay, he's a high elf, which means he's hella weak to magic, and he's probably also fairly vulnerable to physical damage. So looking at my HP, it's like, I bet I could take his ass out, but not an easy fight, though. When it's a 2v1, a little scary. Not scary enough, though. <laughs> oh, thank you, Monscott. No, thanks for joining in, bud. Monscott's a fellow Extra Life charity streamer lad, and he's a, he's a good dude. Appreciate you stopping in, bud. This appears to be a large area with no immediate dangers. Which means I can slowly get my health back. But I should probably watch for traps. Like, I, I don't know if this is a trap, but this pattern makes me nervous. A good place to put traps. Trapezoids. Specific, that's what I'm talking about. No, not, I'm not talking about, like, things that, like, spike traps and whatnot. Talking about angular trapezoidal shapes, which are our greatest weakness. Bridge for yonder. Grand Soul. Ooh, not bad. There are enemies nearby. 
see anything. I, I was, I'm wondering if there's stuff over there. I was hoping I could, like, from a distance, piss whatever is over there off. And then just take pot shots from afar. Especially if they wouldn't be able to, to cross unless I activated the bridge. So I could just be a, be a butthead from afar. But instead, I have to be a close by butthead. Spike trap right there. Very good. For anybody who wishes to to answer, by the way, I'll just kind of pose this question to the chat. I was asking earlier, um, I was asking Stotes earlier what his preferred playstyle for this game typically is. The curious to you what other kinds of builds people usually prefer for games like this. And then secondary question, does anybody have any fun week fun weekend plans? So we are we are we've achieved Friday night status. We've survived the week despite its best efforts to to defeat us. We have emerged victorious. Always fun hearing people got fun plans eats. I'm going to be hanging out with Gracie tomorrow. We're probably going to... It's going to be super hot here in, here in the States, here in the Midwest, at least tomorrow. So we might actually go to a pool. I've got a um, the condo complex in which I live. has a pool that um, I've actually never been to. I mean, I've, I've seen it, but I've never, like, you know, properly been to it. Um, and I've lived here for years, so it's kind of so that I've never been. So it's like, yeah, it's one of those things where it probably wouldn't be a bad idea to try it out. At least remotely. So I might hit that up tomorrow, maybe... Um, wouldn't really be worth it to like go to any parks just because it's gonna be so hot. But like, you know, just just do st stuff to cool off, stay stay chill. Just got a friend from out of town, uh, staying at her place for a little while. Um, so we might we might do stuff with her as well, like uh, show her around St. Louis a little bit. Um, it's always kind of fun when you when you've got somebody from from who's not from the region who's like staying with you it's like oh you get to kind of play tour guy which is kind of fun so um so might do some might you know find some kind of fun stuff around st louis too might hit up the zoo probably not this weekend but at some point hit up the zoo hit up the science center you know, just some of the fun stuff that, that we have around here uh cool warhammer but it's very heavy it's not like it's worth grabbing stealth assassin wife are nice yeah yeah with some potion making of course, in this game, you can get that per the like the poisons. That's where alchemy really gets sick. Because in Morrowind, you could the, the potions could be fun and silly, but you the only time they were really useful truly is if they were benefiting you. If you were making a dam damage willpower or drain health potion, you would just sell it. But in this game, you can do some terrifying things with poisons. Ooh, we got some role-playing games, Stoats. Is it going to be D&D &D or some other system? It'll surprise nobody to know that Stoats is a very accomplished and extremely experienced dungeon master and role-playing game extraordinaire. So when it comes to somebody to introduce one to the wild world of, of role-playing and or D&D, &D, Stoats is the man. He's the man and he might even have a plan. I'm gonna be a kind of a I'm gonna be a little shitty jabroni for a little bit here. I'm gonna. Although the thing is, they will they can restore themselves, so I can't do this forever. But they can seemingly do it forever. So let's do this. Let's see if we can find another route. Oh wait, this might be the only one. Because well, hold on, let's go back. Well, let's see. So there's the downst- Oh, there was no way to go from here, though, was there? Oh, we have to go up. Right. Okay, so never mind. We gotta go that way, then. And then, presumably, there will be a way to get back up, I suppose. Yeah, we, when we did our casual Morwen playthrough a couple years ago, the character I made, White Flare, was exactly what you described. It was a potion-making, sneaky man assassin. And I don't typically make, like, assassin, sneaky- archetype characters that was something new for me but it was very enjoyable like not a standard thing that i typically do but it was funsies skeletons and, Z and zermbers 
Z zombinos. It's one down. Oh. Let's see if I can land a couple shots. That'd be really cool. Like how I'm just unblinkingly walking forward as she's trying to hit me with the shots. Actually, she's hitting me with shots. But no matter, don't matter at all because we're still beating the crap out of her. Also, there's more. More where that came from. Major wound. Got a one shot for some D and D. Necromancer problem. Nice. Relevant. Very nice. It's always so exciting, Stoats, being the one to introduce somebody to D&D &D or, or, or role-playing games in general, tabletop role-playing games. Like you're, like, you're the arbiter of a whole new hobby and, like, story-telling, story-experiencing medium. Because role-playing is, you know, it's, it's weird. And I don't—not in a bad way, obviously. It's a, it's a good weird. But it's weird. And sometimes it's hard to describe to people. And sometimes the best way is to say, you know what, come by my place, me and me and the boys, or me and the homies, we'll, we'll be playing a game, you can join in, you know, we can do a one shot together, we can want, you know, this, we can try that, um, as a way to, like, introduce people, so, like, what Stoats is doing, the way, as, as a way of, like, initiating the, the inexperienced, because it's not for everybody, but for some people, they'll, they'll take to it, they'll be like, this is fucking incredible, why didn't I discover this sooner? Elven Mace, um, it is ju it's just Elven, it's not enchanted, whereas this is pretty cool, actually. Just spill on target, I'll take it. Flash Bolt, that lets me flash people accordingly. Um, the Elven Mace is cool, but it's, again, it's very heavy, and the sell value, it's a, it's basically a 1 to 10, 1 pound to 10 value. Like, the bang per buck ratio is not in our favor, but it looks quite cool. Yes, they, they watch critical or they listen or watch critical role. So yes, they're like in they know about like role playing and, and maybe even have like heard about it or, or watched or listened to people playing it. But have if they have never experienced it themselves and now's the perfect time. That's exciting. Or yeah, well I mean hopefully they would they would recognize that yeah, Matt Mercer and the, the critical role folks are professionals. And that, you know, most D&D experiences won't be, won't have quite that production value level, but they'll still be fun. I've, I've heard people express frustration that they, that they, they worry that Critical Role's popularity will have a, um, oh, by the way, I realize you can't see this. I'm looking at these shoes here. These are Elvis's blue suede shoes. You can do anything but lay harm to my sneak blue suede shoes. That's that's the lyrics. But anyway, yeah, I, um, I've, I've observed people express concern that Critical Role's popularity might adversely color expectations of people who've never played D and D or Path or Pathfinder, you know, Shadowrun, never played tabletop RPGs, but wants to, and they might expect every session to go that way. I, I've I've observed people have that concern. But in practice, or rather, I've never interacted with anybody who's experienced that firsthand. I've, I, I've heard people say, oh, I worry that Critical Role's popularity could have downstream negative effects, but I don't know anybody that, or, or I've not heard of anybody see that actually happen. Like, I, maybe it's happened in the wild, but I've, I, to my understanding is that it's not really a widespread problem of, of people having too high expectations. So I, I, I think you'll probably be in the clear stoats. If anything, I'm sure they'll appreciate what you're doing for them because um even if it's a, a module like a pre-made module d dungeon mastering is not easy it's a, it takes a specific kill, a skill set and experience and improv skills extemporaneous speaking it's tough and it's not for everybody but getting a good dm is worth its weight in gold what's up one legged duck oh my fucking that's that's a good one one legged duck i was about to say oh good good for you and then I read the rest of it, and I was like, oh. Oh my. That'll be fun. No, that will be fun, Stoats. It's, I, I, I see the critical role phenomenon as very much a positive thing, because it's brought more people into the medium. You know, you get, 
You get shows like Critical Role that are popping off. They're super popular. You get Stranger Things, which across multiple seasons have focused a lot about Dungeons and Dragons, bringing that more into the mainstream. Granted, D&D was already trending mainstream, but, you know, now more so than ever. Uh, you know, people know about D&D back in like the 80s. It was this niche underground thing. But now I would say for the better, it's in the mainstream. It's, an, it, it's more easier than ever to get into. And I think that's great. Matt Mercer. That's right. Yeah, there's a syndrome. Yeah, I, 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 I question if it's in, in practice as prevalent as some would concern would be concerned that it is. I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but thankfully it seems like it's in the in the in the minority. So I think you're probably safe, Stones. It's just like that time in Critical Role. Like, I, yeah, I don't think that happens too much. White Flex running games? Nice. Crazy power. Yeah. Yeah, Stoats and I, I'm not going to name names. Just, you know, you never know who's watching. But Stoats and I, we have a number of mutual friends. And some of our mutual friends, what do you think, Stoats? I'm not going to name names, but some of our mutual friends could be accused of maybe min-maxing their characters a little bit, just a little bit. The problem is when you're playing with people who've been playing D&D for like over half their lives. Because here's the thing, Stoats and I, I think I'm like a year or two older than Stoats, but him and I have like several mutual friends and a lot of those mutual friends are like five, six, seven years older than us. Um. Like there, there's like there's like kind of different circles, just like little clusters of our of our friend group, and there's like one or two friend groups I can think of without naming names. So they're like yeah, four to six years older than me, and for a lot of them they've been playing D and D for like you know since they were in grade school. So we're talking people who've been playing Dungeons and Dragons or tabletop games for without exaggeration, thirty plus years, twenty to thirty years. So you get somebody who's played who's been playing this almost their entire life. And they have all this experience and all this knowledge about the systems and and have played so many games. They kind of like know. They, they fine-tune the process over the years. So yeah, they, they give you a character sheet. You look at it, you go, these numbers are absurd. Like how, how you're level one, how are you able to output this much damage? Then you look at their skills, their feats, their attributes, and you go, yeah, it, this is all valid. But fuck, man, they somehow found like the correct combination of things to make a broken ass busted character and they go well yeah it's, it's what i always do for for several years now then you go oh right they're they're like several lifetimes more experienced than i that that explains it what's up d-man yeah d-man's got uh got the the dungeon mastering knowledge as well have not experienced got two new players that's right yes see white flare yeah so i like to think that the positive outweighs the negative satanic panic yeah and that's a that's a without spoiling anything that's a central focus of the current season of the stranger things which i really liked by the way gracie and i just finished it a couple days ago and we both really loved it really liked the newest season but yeah yeah the satanic panic and and like how that gave it kind of an unsavory reputation unfairly so but it it gave it this it also gave it this like sinister seemingly menacing vibe which kind of adds to the allure in a way like, i, I kind of like that semi-evil shit so I almost think it almost worked, you know, in their favor to a, to a degree. But yeah, there was a point where people were like, you know, freaked out or weirded out by it. But I'm glad it's more mainstream because it's something that I think more people should experience and has valid, I would argue, professional skill set uh, encouraging things. Because again, extemporaneous speaking, Im improvising. I mean, if you're the DM, you're, you're planning, you're... You're organizing like these. You're, I would even say managing at times. These are all important skills that a lot of professional situations call for. So all memes aside. Now, I'm not trying to say that playing Dungeons and Dragons will turn you into a Fortune 500 CEO, but I'm not not saying it. I'm not saying that it won't. By the way, White Flare, thank you. Thank you to White Flare. What a homie. Thank you, my friend. Five months, by the way, using that Prime Gaming sub. Thank you, homie. That's that's very sweet. Out of all the channels you could spend your Prime Gaming sub on, you decided to waste it on mine. I'm I'm kidding. Thank you, thank you. That's that's very sweet. You're very generous. Never an expectation, but always appreciated. Summon the devil. That's right. Yeah, yeah. You play it backwards. If you play a D and D game backwards, you'll summon Mega Satan. 
I've seen the one. Oh, I, I don't even know if there's one person. I'm just I, I can think of a few. I can think of a few who could be who could be accused of min maxing their characters, but it's not out of a place of malice. It's because they're just so knowledgeable. They've cracked the they've had the code cracked for decades at this point. So I'm you know how how could you expect somebody to like eject that meta game knowledge from their brains? It, it'd be unreasonable. So it it's kind of unexpected, but but yeah, it's I, I've seen it firsthand. But Shadowrun, yeah. Shadowrun's good. I, I I have a Shadowrun game that's that's kind of on hiatus right now. But Shadowrun is fun. Shadowrun is fun. It's very a very different vibe. System and setting wise compared to D D, but quite good. Plus seven to hit. Dude, Y Flare, you joke. You joke. That kinda happened with our Pathfinder game. One of our guys He joined the campaign a little bit late, so he was like level three. Or level four, I think, when he joined. And, like, the damage he was doing, like, he he was... No, he wasn't even a glass cannon. He was just a cannon. I mean, he was very good at sword. And that was all he was good at. But, man, the numbers he was putting out were, like... Like, for, you know, for, I, had, I had a druid in our Pathfinder game. And I had a lot of utility. I didn't have that much damage. I had a couple, like, pretty good damaging spells that I could do once a day. And then he would cast sword and do twice the damage I could do on a non-crit attack, and it's like, how does he do that? And it was because he had, he had, like, built his character around being very good with sword, and put all of his, his money into having good sword. So, like, I get it, but, oh man, like, there were times where it's like, if not for his damage output, we would have been screwed in this encounter, you know, that kind of thing. You got the world building DM, that's good. That's good, and you got the passion behind it. I mean, that's that's huge for being a DM, because yeah, the world building element is is huge, because the storytelling perspective is is very important for being a DM. So yeah, all very important aspects. Improv skills is, is tricky. Well, I mean, it's that kind of thing just happens with time, and and experience. So something that you know nobody nobody would expect you to be a pro from out starting gate. But yeah, I've um I I've observed that very successful DMs over time we'll, we'll acquire that kind of knowledge. It's hard to do sometimes, but... But, like, you'll surprise yourself. Sometimes. You play on Saturday's Wi-Fi? Nice. Stoats got some knowledge, that's right. Stoats, Stoats has got the... He's got the experience, bud. Yeah, taking no... Yeah, that's a good one, too, yeah. That's one thing that our, that our current DM is really good about. I think I've mentioned before that Adam... He pops in the stream sometimes. Um... Like the, like the sandies. Um, our DM Adam is good about that. He takes notes, uh, very, very religious. Well, I was not say religious, but very uh, studious notes. Wish I could take the hood. I mean, I can take the hood. Wish I could wear the hood and the helmet. But yeah, he he takes very studious notes and he shares some of the notes with us. Other notes are for just him. That looks cool, but again, it. It overwrites our helmet. And the helmet is kind of important because it fortifies magicka, so we'll keep that. Yeah, he keeps studious notes. There's notes he shares with us, you know, about the session. Then there's notes he does not share with us that he keeps for his own. You know, for his own use. And he'll refer, refer to them when he's, you know, working on the game. And then at the end of the campaign, he'll share them with us. And, and it's, he refers to it as uh, his, his, this document is always referred to as Confessions of a Dungeon Master. And it is it is instances where surprises, you know, there were where there were surprises, or things he expected to go a certain way went some other way, or times where he made an encounter more challenging or or more easier. Or last minute changes, or things he forgot that he meant to include but forgot to after the fact, until after the fact. So yeah, those the, the note taking can have many benefits. And the improv all the games. Yeah, there have been a number of occasions where Adam, uh, the DM for our game, he put in he'll put in at least an hour or two, maybe several hours in the days leading up to a session, prepping dungeons and prepping encounters. maybe not so much encounters, but like working on things that he expects us to encounter, like 
put potential scenarios for us to encounter. And uh, more more writing out the way he describes it, at least at kind of like a, f a, f a framework level, things that he anticipates we might go for. The way that certain things might go based on certain interactions and not so much the mechanics of like roles that he would need to make because he's he's experienced enough he doesn't usually have to write those things out ahead of time but but from like a framework or like high level perspective kind of getting his ducks in a row you know before a session and then there are times where we'll do a session and it, and it was like oh but that was a fun one we all had a good time you know some cool stuff happened some challenges happen, and then he'll say after the fact, like, oh yeah, by the way, that was all improv. Like, I, I, I didn't plan anything this week. I was kind of flying by the seat of my pants, and and we were all, well, and we would all be flabbergasted because we'd be like, well, that was awesome. We we would have had no idea otherwise, had you not told us. So yeah, some, sometimes it's more obvious, but, but he is so experienced that when he improvs 100% of the time, it's, it is still very, very good. So yeah, like, once you get to that level, like White Flair is describing, once you get to that level of experience then you can just YOLO it and the players will have no fucking clue. Do I have a group nitro? It it is sometimes tricky finding a group. Like I'm lucky because I have I have a lot of friends that play D, D. So I if I needed to, if I was without a group and I wanted to seek one out, I would have no problems. And I'm very for I'm very uh fortunate. I'm very blessed in that perspective. But it's because I've, you know, I've known, I've had friends in my, kind of in my circles for years that have been focused around D&D. &D. Whereas if I didn't, and I, you know, was looking for a group to join, I mean, you, you can, like, find pickup groups fairly easily in the wild, but my most fun D&D experiences, by and large, have been playing with friends, or, or at least with people that I, that I already know. And I've met new friends through D&D. &D. So I met Shelly. Um, who's in our, uh, our, um, Shadowrun group. And Shelby from our previous group. Like, you know, a bunch of those guys and gals I I've met through, through Adam and our games. But yeah, like the pickup group per uh, thing might not be everyone's cup of tea. Also, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of flippy flopping so I'm looking to see if there's other parts I want to explore. I'm going to check out this one corner then we'll check out the sanctuaries which is the final area. I think. I think it's the final area. Whee! Yeah, taking notes. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a good habit to be in I think. Got lots of notepad with ideas. That's good. Yeah, that, that's already a good sign, uh, Demon. If you already got like stuff you're you're tracking, that's that's some good shit. Good shit right there. Pirate crew. Oh, that's cool. Last minute kind of thing. That's awesome. Oh, I got. See, yeah, maybe not like overarching campaigns. That's a good point too, White Flare. I mean, uh, Stotes was earlier. He was talking about doing like a, a kind of a one-off. Like a one shot with his group, or to like to, to play with some new folks, which is perfectly valid. And yeah, like like Whitefly was saying, yeah, or just or just like you know throwing kind of dungeons together just for the fun of it. So yeah, because that's the thing too. I guess what I was describing kind of was more aligned to world building and story building, where there is kind of an overarching story, which can be very fun. It can also be a lot, and it can be a commitment for the DM for sure, but also for the players. Also, yeah, that's, that's all this is over here. So, and everybody not be might not be down for something that ambitious. So, yeah, what Wifer is describing is also perfectly fine. Yeah, if you want to do, like, you know, not fuck around with, like, some overarching story, but just want to, like, do a kind of a dungeon crawl, like a dungeon exploration, dungeon crawling kind of deal with some light story and have it be more framed around kind of one-shot adventures... And yeah, yeah, drinking beers and just hanging out with the homies, that's also a, a, a great medium for such fun times. Yeah, the way I see it, there's no, there's no wrong way to do it. A massive game, oh my god. 20 plus players, Jesus, that is, that's impressive and maddening. Whew. 
I mean, I guess it, I mean, it, it could be done, but God, it sounds like a lot to manage. I just think about combat taking, you know, like think about how long some turns can be. Some, some players turns can be multiply that by 20. Whew. I worry you're going to lose people. Yeah. Cause that's the thing. Like right when you have like really long combat turns, what have you, people will and I'm guilty of this sometimes, especially when I'm streaming, I'm multitasking, right? Like I'm interacting with chat and sometimes Adam will be like, what do you think, Alex? And I'll be like, oh shit, sorry, you got me multitasking. But, you know, people will check their phones, they'll be kind of fucking around and it's like, your turn. It's like, oh shit, I wasn't ready. Which causes more delays. So with a, with a group that large, it can be harder to manage. It's impressive though. Oh, yeah, Monster of the Week. That's a good example. Because there's a... that That's a... I think it's like a legit role-playing system called Monster of the Week. Um, some of my friends... I think I actually might have played one of those one time. Um, with Adam and a few of his... few of his buddies. Damn it. We're so close. There we go. I was, was going to say, one more shot. And he burdened me. No, I think I might be able to, to dispel that. Although I think I tried this once before and it didn't work. Can I, can I dispel being burdened? I need magic. Yes. Oh, no, it didn't. Oh, it dispelled the buff. Okay, so you can dispel buffs, but you can't dispel negatives. That's kind of weird. Does anybody know if there's a way to negate something like this or to dispel it because I was hoping dispel would work but maybe it was too high 95% that's pretty good effectiveness yeah you would think 45 points would be enough but it's uh, oh it's several groups I guess that's that's less fucky water oh that's cool water walking damn that's sick I'll take that yeah Water walking, that's actually like very good. I'll take that. But yeah, that's probably the way to do it. Yeah, have it broken up into multiple kind of subgroups. Because then, you, realistically, you could play, you know, sessions without having the entire group there. 20 people, fucking hell. Running it off his phone, too. That's impressive. That was the you did stoats? Wow. Stay after hours. Oh, that's cool stuff. I mean, uh, yeah, maybe. Maybe there's more to this than I was thinking, because at first I was thinking like, whew, that sounds like a lot, but yeah. I mean, the way you tell it, Stoats, it actually sounds kind of dope. I've heard of like Pathfinder... What are they called? There was like a word for it. It was, I don't think it's a thing that really happens nowadays. I think it was called Pathfinder Society. In which we live. Um, no, it was like... I can't remember the name. It's something like that. Pathfinder Society. Pathfinder. Some other word like that. But it was like a multi-group, like 100 person plus event that would take place every so often. And, and Adam, the, the, D, the uh, DM for our group, would, would participate in these years and years ago. It was like hosted by multiple DMs and all of the campaigns were like interconnected in some way. Um, and they were very elaborate and, um, took a lot of planning. And of course, since it involved multiple DMs, you would get a lot of different play styles and a lot of different group, uh, a lot of different, like, campaign experiences kind of bundled together. Am I supposed to be impressed? Help you get out of here. I want to attack you. I think I have hit him zero times and he's hit me, like, three times. I'm out, of, I'm out of the juice. Yeah, I think I maybe hit him once. Ouch, that hurt a lot, actually. Oh, shit, I'm in trouble. When did I save last? Just for the Zambinos. So I do have... Oceans. Did he just... You didn't just duplicate yourself. That would be an illegal gamer move. Whoa. 
Oh, is that is a thing? Alright, I'm going to make a potion. Either there's a second dude, or he like, or there's an illusion spell for duping yourself. The Gen Con, yeah, I don't know if this was, if this was a Gen Con. If it was like a smaller society thing, but yeah, that's the one, Stoats. Oh, that's cool, White Flare. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be cool as fuck, like where they're... Where, yeah, they're, it's like all part of, an, of a persistent kind of universe. That, that's probably how the society stuff works, too, for that matter. Or maybe that's what D-Man is talking about, because apparently it's a, a known thing. Interesting. So yeah, so he's trying to juggle all these things. It's a conquest game. Oh, that's that's remarkable. That sounds really neat. Six potions of healing, 35 points. What else do I have? I, th I think I've got a few healing things. How much health do I have? 155 total. Got these. Let's drink this one for show. And I'll drink these. Yeah, it was Pathfinder Society one. Swapping turns. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah, you you had kind of gotten your, your game plan ready, Mr. D-Man, yeah. Man, I cannot hit shit. Oh, I think I did hit him that time. And then he healed. What a cheater. Jesus, he keeps... He has, like, infinite healing. An infinite... Oh, crap. Oh, I keep wanting to right click. He has a lot of magic. Or he's got a lot of potions. And I have a lot of potions, too. Um... I cannot finish him off though. Okay, so he is indeed a separate person. I wonder where he came from though. There must have been a, a person behind me when I turned that corner earlier. Um, I'm going to just run away. Oh no, I found more friends. Because I'm running out of healing potions, but I still have magic of potions. Keep running into more homies. That must have been what happened. I probably... Oh, because this is a new instance. That's why. Yeah, I forgot this is a new area. In my mind, I had forgotten I entered a new area, so I thought all these other areas I had already explored. That's... That's why. Yeah, because in my mind, I was still in the earlier area. It's the sanctuaries, not the barracks. There's the Adventures League. Adventures League, that sounds cool. I'm guessing it's probably a, a somewhat similar concept. Are there any traps I can lead them into? Probably not. Man, I, I'm hoping that I could like just kind of onesie twosie, twosie these guys. I'm gonna drink a Magicka Potion. 75. Do I have a... Let's see, I should drink the shitty ones first. Oh, was that Fortify? I actually didn't mean to drink the Fortify. That looks like Fortify. And one cast, I'm already out. Yeah, I guess I gotta drink all this shit then. Almost if I'm not missing. That was my problem. I was missing all of my shots. Like, 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 like that guy's been almost dead for a half century. 
I'm just warming up, you pathetic worm. A few of these left. Um. Oh, it's called sorcery. There it is. Boop. Unfortunately, taking spell damage does not do anything to our armor stats. It's not like we're gaining anything by taking those hits. Taking melee hits, at least, we get some some juice. One and... Oh, and knocked him down. The fact that that one guy was at low health and didn't heal mean, makes me think that he was uh, they were either running out of, of uh, potions. Like, he just healed a few times. There we fucking go. Jesus. That was a tough fight, man. It was my own damn focus. I kept running into more dudes. That was like four of this one necromancer. Just back to back to back as I kept backing into more of these assholes. So it's my own damn fault. It's a tough fight, man. Tough fight when you're having to fuck a bunch of them. D-Man says this world is ready to start whenever I get- Oh, I mean, I, I probably wouldn't be able to, to join in myself, D-Man, just because I'm already in. I, I'm in one game that's kind of on hiatus, and there's a second one that might start up at some point. It, it's- it, I, I've got one that I've committed to and one that's kind of a maybe. So I probably shouldn't, you know, spread myself too thin. I do- I appreciate the offer, though. Using potions. Yeah, I- well, that's the thing, Stoats. I could be accused of... correctly. Of, um, hoarding things like that, like a dragon. The- the buff and restoration things, like a dragon for, you know, thinking, oh, what if I really need them? But this was a situation where it's like, well, shit, I- I kinda might really need them. Um... It's either that or, or I just save all the time and save scum. But I, the thing is, I don't know. I don't remember what like when the last save was. It was probably when I entered. The actually maybe not because it's Fort Asterius. It doesn't say the barracks. Or the, um, what is this? The sanctuary. Because it auto saves every so often, but it it doesn't always auto save when entering a new instance. So it's like I can't rely on that. So I'm trying to. I'm trying to not necessarily save scum. I'm trying to be somewhat neutral, so somewhat casual. So it's like I, I can't trust myself, so I'm, I'm trying to be somewhat cautious. Not that cautious though, because I mean, I, you know, my, we saw our, our health dip quite a bit a couple times there, so we could have gotten got. And we taken a bit more. And plus, they're giving us more healing and magic of things. So, it's not like we don't have the resources. I'm always, I always feel a little silly using health potions because, you know, I've buffed, or I've built, attempted to build a character that focuses so much on healing myself, you know, restoration and whatnot. So whenever I'm drinking a health potion, I'm kind of sad because I think like, oh, I would have rather gotten to a safe spot and healed myself. That way I'm feeding my restoration. And in fact, maybe I should have done that as a first resort is get more magicka back. Oh my god, I missed. And yeah, maybe I should have focused on how do I get magicka back so I can heal myself. But then it was also a, a scary... Scary panic moment. Got her ass. Blood. But, I mean, look, yeah, look at all the poisons they're throwing at us. God damn. Oh, and they keep records, White Flare? That's honestly probably pretty smart. 
I think there was something similar in Pathfinder Society where like there were receipts to show like uh, that that would basically paper trail to show like yeah how your character got certain things or or gotten experience for certain levels to, to gain certain levels. Because yeah, I think there was like some kind of receipt system to show where like you could trace the lineage from getting this experience from this one encounter from this one DM on this one session, like that kind of stuff. The one regularly, well, there was the Pathfinder one we did, I guess at this point, probably two years ago. Then there's the the Shadowrun one, which is kind of on hiatus right now. And there's a second one I was talking to Adam not too long ago about. Yeah, he, he has some ideas about about a new one he might start out, but he's been pretty busy, so he's not. Uh, he, he's kind of indicated that it's it's kind of on the back burner, but um, he's he's got some ideas on of like an, an addition, a, a separate group he was thinking about maybe starting up. Adam is one of these DMs where he's he's very good at keeping a lot of plate spinning, and it can be tricky too because you know you'll have one group that is doing just fine. Um, you know, for a D&D campaign, you know, it's like you got, got a regular schedule, you've got, um, you know, uh, uh, reliable people, reli reliable players who are able to make games and, are, you know, able to prioritize their schedules accordingly, all that jazz. And then, like, something changes, you know, like someone gets a new job, they have to move away, they have a, a family, you know, a, a, a family, a, a change in, in a family configuration. Woo, nice jump. And it's harder for them to make games. You know, they're starting. They're starting class. They got a new job recently. They got this. They got that. Um, and that can, you know, cause a kind of a shift, for better or for worse. Um, in the in the group dynamic, so, and that happens sometimes. That happened to our Pathfinder game. Like that happened where like two of our players were pretty much unable to make, you know, unable to commit to games. That was kind of like like that was kind of what killed it. Um. But as people kind of come back into the fold, you know, somebody is like, oh, hey, I'm moving back into town or I've got a new job and I'm not working nights anymore. Now I can play games again. And Adam, I think to himself, OK, well, I've got this person and this person who are usually available on this days or like on this time frames. So, yeah, I could get I could probably get a group together to, you know, to kind of fill that void or, or, or kind of fill that niche. Does he enjoy at the way he the way he tells it, at least is that he enjoys uh, running multiple groups simultaneously. Also, I think this is the... This loops around. There we go. So we've explored the whole dungeon. So the way he tells it is he enjoys keeping those plates spinning and, and running multiple groups and... And, like, kind of enjoying the, the... The dynamics that different groups will have... With certain people and, you know, certain players and certain systems. So anyway, that's a lot of words to basically say... Um... You know, I, nothing just decided right now, but it, it I'm, I'm kind of keeping that in my back pocket for the time being. Just use the, yeah, that's what I, I'm, I'm trying to like kind of force myself to stilts because, you know, again, I think of Morrowind, which was a, a slower game. So with Morrowind, you, I, I felt at least had usually more time in combat and things like that to find ways around having to use health potions and that kind of stuff. So, you know, I, I was, my, my, I wouldn't say bad habits, but maybe not the best habits that I've, that I've learned from games like this were encouraged by games like Morrowind, the slower, um, more almost turn-based combat sections or com combat systems that allowed me to be yeah, maybe, maybe min-max would be the word for it, so. So with this one, where it's a little bit more fluid, a little more get up and go. And less like, you know, let, let me, let me plot out my moves methodically. Means I gotta, I gotta go with the flow. Usually boost boost your mat your stats to max. Really, I mean I, I mean the stats are one thing. I realize the equipment is is a huge one for sure. Some things like sneak. Oh well, yeah, I mean well definitely definitely in 
this game I can tell the difference where if I'm sneaking and somebody has their back turned to me, I'm probably going to sneak past them, you know, probably. Um, although it might be hard for me to pickpocket them, obviously. So it's like, it's like, you know, you, you will, certain elements of certain skills, certain aspects of certain skills will absolutely be harder to fudge regardless of the skill value, but other skills, it seems like the skill value does matter significantly. Um, but it depends. I mean, it depends on the build and it depends on, it also depends on like, you know, what you want out of the game. Cause I'm not, I'm not going to like, I'm not going to shit on somebody who would not really want to focus on the minutia of the leveling system. Cause the Elder Scrolls leveling system, at least for this game in Morrowind, I'm, I'm assuming Skyrim has a similar leveling system. Um, I don't mind it, but other people are not a huge fan of it. So, oh shit, right. I need to go, well, I can just go this way. I think. Is it all wraps around? Um, yeah, not everybody enjoys the leveling system that this game and Morrowind and presumably Skyrim offers. So if they didn't want to engage with that, then I wouldn't really hold that against them. You know, you know your, your time is valuable. So it's like, if you don't want to mess with the, the nitty gritty, then I wouldn't hold it against anybody. Getting five people to sit in the same room. Yeah, yeah, it can be tough. It can be tough and it gets, it only gets harder as we get older. As we all get older and get more responsibilities and and things like that, just how it goes. The the true final boss of every D and D campaign is schedule uh, s schedule shenanigans and juggling availabilities and competing priorities. One two hour sessions. That that's that's pretty good. Yeah, that that's probably about what we do. For our groups, we probably go for ouch. Yeah, maybe two, sometimes three hours if we're getting real frisky, but usually about two hours. Skyrim's leveling is oh, that's good. Good to know, at least. Yeah, because I had assumed it was somewhat similar. When I first played Morrowind, it took me an an un, an embarrassing amount of time to truly understand how the leveling system worked. Because I was like leveling skills, leveling skills, and I was like, man, I'm still level one. What the fuck? It took me forever to realize, like, oh, it's. You have to level up your major and minor skills. Oh, shit. Like, uh, yeah. I probably should have figured it out eventually or, or like looked it up, but yeah. It took a long time for me to understand. And this game has it pretty similar. Like to more win more. I would say if push comes to. Came, if, if push were to come to shove. That I would agree, White Flare, or that I would feel similarly. I like this game a lot. I'm enjoying it. And there's things in this game that I wish Morrowind had. There's times where it's like, man, when I when I play Morrowind again, I'm gonna miss feature XYZ. But I can also tell, yeah, there there will be things where when I when I play Morrowind again, I'll be like, oh yes. I'm, I'm back in the in the realm of familiarity with this one thing that I that I missed. Also, we never did find another entrance to that one little sneaky cave thing earlier that way. And I'm curious, because there was indication of like a second floor that I was hoping to maybe find. We haven't seen it yet. I kind of want to explore around a little bit more to see if we can find the main entrance, because I'm very curious. Daggerfall. Oh yeah, Daggerfall is another one. I've not even played Daggerfall yet, but I would like to. So there's unity like you just said in fact it's on gog i think good old games right they they um because originally you would have to download from bethesda's website the free to play daggerfall version and then you'd have to download the unity uh like package to i guess like wrap around it like the the wrapper executable or what have you but i think on good old games they have it just as a all-in-one package so you just install it and you're good to go Cause yeah, I think if I think when, not if, but when I play Daggerfall, I'd probably just go for the Unity version. The original version, I'm sure, is fine, but the da the um, the Unity version seems like it'd be a little bit nicer, nicer visually, but also like easier to run. Hopefully, with fewer bugs. I remember D-Man was saying there's some pretty gnarly bugs in OG Daggerfall before your time. Yeah, I was in the same boat, White Flare. I was like, I was at the right age for, for Morrowind. 
I think I would have enjoyed it regardless of my age, but because I was like the perfect target market for it, it, it scratched all the itches. Might enjoy it. I would say if you like Daggerfall, you would probably like Morrowind. If you if you like Daggerfall and if you like Skyrim, Morrowind is kind of well, I've never played Skyrim, but I from what I understand, is that it it, it serves as a pretty good midpoint literally. You know, it's number three out of out of five, obviously, but still it's also a good midpoint from a paradigm perspective. Parad paradigmatically. They liked that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I I make somewhat use out of Matt Marcus and whatnot, but not too much for that exact reason. And actually, you know, to this game's credit, like I said, there wasn't, there isn't a map marker for this one dungeon. In fact, there's not even the entrance on the map for that dungeon that we saw earlier. So I can't even remember where it is. So, like, this is a, a very good example of the kinds of thing I liked in Morrowind. I liked exploring and, dare say, maybe even being a little lost in Morrowind because it forced me to really, really drink in my surroundings. Now, there was a, what I think would, what appeared to be a dungeon, or a, some ruins, rather. It was back this way. There was an entrance that was never resolved. Their shrine back that aways. So we saw it on the, on the main path, and I got excited. And it was before we crossed that bridge. The one thing I, I do miss about Morrowind, one of many, is that I can't, like, le leave notes. Oh, that was it. Yeah. Oh, shit. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there was an entrance. That was mad. That was noted because I couldn't find it earlier. There definitely wasn't on the overworld, though. Maybe that was it. I think that was it. So yeah, I, I got my wires crossed then. Yeah, I mean, pretty much, D-Man. Yeah. <laughs> Follow this path. Look for a big tree. If you see a house, you've gone too far. Okay, thanks, fam. It about be that way. The differences in those design principles, yeah? Oh, Thief. Yeah, yeah. Well, of course, we played Thief. Gold, at least. Thief Gold. For the first time, uh, last year. Uh, yeah, I think it was last year. Early last year. Oh, here's the actual entrance. Oh, shit, we found it. Oh, wow, it was so close. We just... I just wandered past like a goober. It was just close all along. It's not quite hit scan, but it's pretty damn quick. It's not hit scan, but it's quick scan. The wings were still flapping. I was like, is he still alive? Closing the gap. Ah! Fuck you. I'll go, I'll go ahead and take their, take their, their galls, their balls, imp balls, that's what for dinner. Delicious. It's more about the thief game than a train. Yeah, I, I think I might know exactly what you're getting at, Stoats, and that sounds like a video I would very much like to watch because I loved Thief Gold, and I want to play Thief 2. And again, I love Morrowind, I love all these old school design principled games, so that sounds like it'd be up my alley. Mediocre game, really? Well, the, the I know what Stoats and I are probably referring to is the original Thief 1, 2, and I and maybe 3. And then there was like 2013 Thief game, which I heard was so-so. Was, was middling. Removes. Oh, that sounds a nice white flare. Verbal directions. Interesting. See, that's the one thing is like, you know, you can you can mod a game to do things like that, to, you know, to kind of rewire some of the intricacies like that. But of course, the game was was originally at least built with the expectation of map markers and, you know, more AAA streamlinedness than 
it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work for modders to to undo some of that or, or to re to realign some of that to have more old school sensibilities. So I recognize that that's it's it's a uh, it's a big ask, um, and that some aspects might not really be easily at least moddable to because like like a lot of times like a dungeon or or like a quest kind of experience it's one thing giving map markers or like verbal directions it, you know map markers versus verbal directions vice versa but then like there's other aspects of the game that were designed with the expectation of map markers or with the expectation of kind of a linear go here kill bad guy come back here and I give monies because like there's the things in the background that the player that that you know you or I might not necessarily see at the service level it's like a lot of these, a lot of times these things are kind of all linked together like these these design principles so when I think of mods that attempt at least to kind of like re old schoolify a game like that I I sometimes worry that it might not go deep enough because that design principle of map markers, mainstream accessibility, that all that jazz, is like so ingrained in the game, it might be really hard to extract. Um, because like you might see that reflected in other ways in the map design, in like the dungeon design, and the map, like the overworld design, that kind of stuff. I'm speaking pretty generically because I've never played Skyrim, but I'm just thinking like a lot of times it's it's not fully modular it's like those things are kind of ingrained it's, it's interesting though I, I it's an interesting subject the idea of kind of old school versus new school design principles like Stotes was saying and translating one to the other and the pitfalls you can hit sometimes I'm just yeah that's the thing too D man like you know you know we're a lot of us are kind of wax waxing poetic about the old school Morrowind Daggerfall design principles and like how how we liked we have fond memories of searching for hours and hours for entrance to dungeon that was sitting beneath a tree that was you know where the guys said oh yeah look for the big tree and then you look in a forest and they're all big trees and you spend an hour and you get fed up you look up a walkthrough and they say well yeah it's the big tree and you go well they're all big trees fuck you and it's not helping and like I have fond memories of that, but I also understand other people might find that frustrating. So it's like, I, I'm not going to like shit on somebody for saying, you know, I prefer Skyrim because I, I kind of want to just play the game. Like, I, I just want to hop in and, and, you know, slap some goblins around and have a good time. It's like, that's fine too, honestly. Like, there's there's really no right or wrong as far as I'm concerned. It was on PS4. Yeah, that would have been the probably the newer Thief game. Yeah, the one that Stoats and I referred to, that Thief, the original Thief, was like, it was like 1998, I think, or 97. It was. It's a real old game. It, there's no way. Well, I shouldn't say there's no way, but it's unlikely that Thief, the original Thief, would, would be playable on PS4. Clairvoyance. Oh God, really, wife? I don't doubt it. I do not doubt it. What's up, five? Yeah, yeah. We found the imps and their gall, or their balls. Thief for strip late. Nice. Yeah, I gotta look that up, Stoats. That sounds like it would tickle my pickle. Stoats knows all about how to tickle my pickle. Stoats has experienced my pickle in more away. I'm sorry, I'll stop. DLC for a bank heist. Interesting, yeah. Yeah, I've heard the like the the reboot thief game was Um not horrible, but pretty forgettable. Which is a shame, because the original Thief was very, very good and very much a a landmark game. All these same points, yeah, I love it, man. That's Fun deep dive. It's ultra nerdy, but I love it. There's a, a few really fun. Yeah, I don't doubt that, Fifinger. You can post a link. Yeah, you can post in the chat, Stoats. Feel free to. Or, or you can either post it or you can post it in Discord. Either or. Because I'd love to check it out. Make the map in game. Really, White Flag? That sounds cool. That sounds like some Ultima kind of things, but I don't know. I think Ultima did have a map for you. Sorry, I know I, I'm kind of I know I'm riffing a little bit, but it's, I I like this kind of conversation topic. It's interesting. Yeah, I'd be curious what MMO that would be white player because it had to have been something old school. T 
to 30 minutes. Yeah, I, I'm I'm saving that for later, though, Stoats. Yeah, I appreciate the heads up on that, because that sounds very much up my alley. My pickle is preemptively already feeling tickled. I've got, I've got the pre-pickle tickles. Which is, you know, a good time. <laughs> Drek, he said. Yeah, you got that one. Oh, that that was the ranger one. Yeah, that was in your probably in, on your clipboard. That's awesome. Oh, Etrian Odyssey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never played it, but I know exactly which one, which which series you're referring to. Because yeah, the, the three, it would have been the DS or 3DS. So yeah, you had to use the stylus. Yeah, something similar in Phantom Hourglass, Zelda, Phantom Hourglass, and Spirit Tracks, where yeah, you could like make physical notes. On the maps, I love that feature, and I loved it in Morrowind. Yeah, in Morrowind too, you could like right-click the map and save little, little, little notes, which I used religiously in my Morrowind playthroughs. And when I did Morrowind Randomizer, in fact, I guess I'll go ahead and say this now: I, I have ambitions to get back into Morrowind Randomizer. It was something I streamed a lot. God, probably two and a half, maybe closer to three years ago. I I, I developed some mods. And then found mods on other places where I was, I, I we, we kind of were able to cobble together a kind of a gameplay loop that was sort of a Morrowind randomizer rogue, roguelite style experience. Where I, I had like limitations that I would put on myself when I played the game. I, you know, I, if I, the, it, like, so I would have um, permadeath kind of forced upon myself so I'd be like if my character dies I have to make a new one I had quick character generation like I had a mod to make the characters run faster uh, random starting points uh, mods to add and randomize the loot tables and randomize the monster spawns um, things to randomize the outfits that characters wear and weather effects, and there's even a mod that I found recently called Door Randomizer, where you enter a door and there's a some percent chance that, you, the chance that you can identify that the door will teleport you to somewhere else in the world. So you could, you know, you go to Fargoth South in Sidonine, and suddenly you're in Solstheim. And, uh, you're, and you're having to outrun Frost Elementals. Whoops, wrong spell. So, shit like that. So that's something I want to get back into. Because I was... I, I saw... I watched a Morrowind video on YouTube recently, and it... Reminded me... Of things that I want to get back into. Because there's changes that I want to implement for the mods that I made. Specifically the Lootable Spellbooks mod. There's, there's stuff I want to change around with that. And there's other mods that I want to make, maybe. I, I, that's kind of ambitious, though. Like, I don't know if I want to... Over overcommit, but like there's things I want to try my hand at, so anyway, there's there's a lot of shit I want to get back into, so it's like finding the time to do it is tricky, but yeah. There, there I have ambitions that I wish to realize. Also, Pogger, good to see you, bud. Ultima games. You're right, Five you're right, yeah. Yeah, the physical copies, they would give you like actual cloth maps. You know, make them like they used to, man. Nowadays, you gotta you gotta pre-order the GameStop exclusive physical deluxe giant big dick addiction edition, not addiction. Well, yes, that too. But yeah, to get the you had to like pre-order the collector's edition, and then when it when it gets to your place, it's like a little it's like a unlaminated printer paper misaligned paper sheet that has like a smiley face written on it that just has the word map on it like so much so much of the time those like pre-order bonuses are i mean sometimes they're cool but a lot of times they're just kind of so so it's like it's like i overpaid for this goddamn i paid so much money and i got this rinky dinky little little trinket this was not worth the extra 80 dollars i paid it's good to see you pogger yeah this is this is elden ring this is elden ring um, minus the Eldens and, but more rings. I've, I've never, I've not played Elden Ring yet, so I don't really know anything about it. I've watched people stream it, but I wasn't 
I wasn't like really following it, so I just I just saw the action and I was like I, I see cool flashy moves and cool spells and scary monsters. That's all I care about. Um endurance. What rings do I currently have? I think the rings I have right now might be better. Shield ooh, shield twelve percent's good. At twenty nine, that's pretty sick. Oof, yeah, that twelve percent's pretty sick. I kinda need that one, man. Airflight any randomizer. How would a Morrowind randomizer work? Well, again, it's it's not really a true randomizer because it's more it's just a collection of mods that all work together in a way where that matched with like the style that I'm like choosing to play in kind of makes it a randomizer because the idea of like Ocarina of Time Rando or Majora's Mask Rando or you know Paper Mario like all these other games that have randomizers is like usually the the expectation is that like it's a way to make the game relatively quicker to get into and play and Morrowind's a very slow game by its definition so it's like how do I make the game a little bit quicker to get into and with goals that might be other than beat the final boss and win the game like you know having different goals with with character uh with classes that I'm generating you know randomly generating that are that have weird and unpredictable combos with starting spells that might be different from what they usually are and um and monsters that spawn in areas that they don't normally so it's like basically making as many things unpredictable as possible and Morwen already has a lot of things randomized into it so you know, there's loot tables, there's merchant, a merchant uh, table that they're drawing from when they're selling you things, or having things on sale, that is. So, and there, you know, there, there's, there's a, this game has level scaling very aggressively. There is level scaling in Morrowind as well, so there, there's other kind of systems, systems in place. Like to the fast rank, yeah, yeah, Zelda randomizer is kind of the de facto for a lot of folks. Ultima 5. I've never played a single Ultima game, but I have some friends that grew up playing that shit, and they, they've told some fun stories. Dungeon. Oh shit, we're talking OG Dungeon Siege, Fivefinger? Because I played that shit, and I liked it, but I never beat it. I want to go back to it at some point. I got stuck in one area. I might have even told you about this. I got stuck in one area where I, like, I, I just I couldn't be, get past this like one area with enemies that were just way too powerful, and I... I, I got impatient, so I never I put the game down and never picked it back up again. Which I regret, because I like the game a lot. This one, yeah, resist 10% and 10%. It's pretty good. Endurance is always good. I mean, this one's incredible. Endurance is always good. Resist fire, resist paralysis, resist... I mean, these are all nice. But I think what I might do is put these back on if I'm fighting elemental things. You know, mages, that kind of stuff. Whereas this is more, you know, always useful and good for, for physical combat, specifically. Hmm. Haven't played Elden Ring. Yeah, I mean, I'll play it. I'll, I would like to get to it eventually. I know not everybody likes it, but I I, I, I think I would like it based on what I've seen. But I'm in no rush. I got too many other games to play in the first place, so I'm in no rush to scoop up more, necessarily. Sometimes not very balanced. I I know I remember yeah I remember you D man saying that you were not too happy with with certain aspects of the game. Um, most of my friends seem to like it, but yeah I've I've heard from a few that there was like a, a point at, after which they stopped enjoying it as much. So sounds like the mid to late game can be a bit of a grind, maybe not a grind, but a bit of a slog for some. But most of my friends have have really really enjoyed it. Um, it's like a not universally positive, but but pretty positive overall reception which is nice probably more so than dark souls 2 and 3 well it seems like 3 has been pretty universally positive but 2 was pretty divisive bloodborne i don't know i feel like actually come to think of it i think i think bloodborne some people from the get-go were like this is not my style of game i don't think anybody i, I don't know if anybody that felt hoodwinked by blood by bloodborne I feel like the friends that I know that liked Bloodborne knew from the get-go they were going to like it, and the ones that didn't like it or weren't interested in it, either they didn't buy it or they were, like, dubious from the start. 
because Bloodborne is very different from Dark Souls. So like they weren't ex they weren't necessarily expecting a Dark Souls experience. Smartly so. Yeah, that's all I got. Okay, I'm just trying to keep track of all these places. But yeah, but for Elden Ring, yeah, it sounds like some people were maybe feeling a little bit hoodwinked by it. Just a little bit. Oh, Jesus. I was reading chat. Mr. Troll. Rude. Let me just spend my entire magic bar fucking you up. Oh, you got a buddy. Ouch. Ouch, let me just get hit by every shot. Every single shot. Randomize the shops. Yeah. Well, some shops, yeah. Some shops for sure. I think it would be fun to randomize. Others, others would be tricky. But yeah, that, that's one aspect of it. White Flare is like thinking about things to randomize. And of course, it's an old game with a, you know, fairly old scripting system. So modding it yourself can be a bit tricky and there's a lot of mods for it, the game out there already. But some of them, you know, maybe there may not be a mod that does the thing that I'm looking for, or maybe there's a mod that does do the thing I'm looking for, but it's so old it hasn't been maintained, and the script editors don't support it anymore, so I have to find something else or try to modify it myself. And I'm a software developer by trade, so I can probably eventually figure it out, but it's like, oh, but it would take a lot of time and effort. Do I want to, you know, spend that many hours grinding that out myself, or do I just want to look elsewhere for something, something else that I would like to do? It's one of those, uh, picking your poisons kind of situations. Modding something like that and, and kind of having a shopping list of, or, or a wish list. Of, of like, things I would like to see in a game like that. I'm not going to pick up that troll fat. We're getting, we're getting fairly heavy. Really thick. Just saw some light. It's either a, I was gonna say it's either a small boy or a big boy. Actually, we've only seen monsters. We haven't seen any dudes yet. What are you doing? He's like looking over here. What are you doing, man? But yeah, we were describing the white flare. Yeah, that's that's one of those things where like. If you're trying, if you're in my situation where you're trying to find mods or make mods yourself to turn a not very randomized game into a more roguelite-y, randomize -y kind of experience, then yeah, you have to like consider what are things that I do want to randomize versus things I would rather steer clear of. And it can be fun, but it can also be, uh, be time, it can be like time consuming because there's a lot of things to consider a lot of times. Ultima 5. Oh, it's a mod. Oh, it's a that explains the Dungeon Seeds thing. Okay. Uh, I wasn't sure of the connection. The troll was trolling us. Biomutant. Biomutant rings a bell. Don't know much about it, though. I, 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 I feel like I've... Oh, wait, I should be- I should switch off to this, yeah, just to- Not equip this enchanted item. I can't? Why not? Huh. Is it because- am I in combat? Maybe it's because I'm over-encumbered. Well, let's- yeah, let's drop some stuff first. I was picking up a bunch of like- oh, actually, yeah, I should just do this. I should just make some potions. Because I have like all this troll fat. Damage health. Or these two. That's a good way to churn through some stiff. Store health. That's legit. That is legit. Pretty good. It's pretty recent. Okay, so it's a pretty recent game. Over encumbered, yeah. Yeah, I was hanging on to this extra pair of greaves because I wanted to sell one of them. So, you know, 720 value for four pounds is pretty chill. Why not, though? Oh, okay, you have to unequip one to go for the other. Whatever. 
My boots are busted. My Curus is getting... Getting uh, pretty sad. In fact, I might just switch to this one. Because I wanted to sell this eventually, but we couldn't find a merchant that could pay a high enough price for it. We have, actually, well, hmm. If I switch to these shoes, we look ridiculous. Or if I speed, though. Actually, speed might be more helpful for us, but that's, that's still pretty nice, though. These are nice. I'm going to just hang on to these. Because that could be nice for just exploring later on. I wouldn't use them in combat, obviously, but just nice to have. Yeah, not bad, not bad. I should add a follow which command, five finger. That's a good, that's a good point, actually. I feel like, and maybe you might have even been one of them. I feel like I've I've had a few people attempt that command, and and whenever I see it, it's like, oh right, I gotta add that to my list of stuff to do. Actually, speaking of stuff to do, I should um, let's do this. Save real quick, and I need to use, I need to use the restroom. Thank you, by the way. Again, thank you to Ape Lama. Ape Lama is also a team member. Uh, he's he's a fellow team member of the stream team. So if you like my stream and you like Ape Lama stream and you want to watch more people that play Elder Scrolls games and Soulsborne games and do community nights and um, are interactive with their chats and. Um, and do, do variety kinds of things. There's a lot of streamers that, that fit all of those bills and more in that Kingdom Team link. So if you ever wanted to find more cool peeps to follow, I, I, I follow everybody in that list and I've watched almost all of them at least once. And I, I've, I, th everybody there is super cool. Everyone is super cool and I'm, I'm, uh, 8 Lama and I are amongst some, some cool peeps. The mega chip, that's right, that's right, yeah, that's what Ape Llama looks IRL, or how he looks IRL. Sorry, sorry to dox you, Ape Llama, but that's, that is exactly what he looks like. Face reveal. A bit, of, a bit of a tears ago. Ooh, so yeah, so you're, you're, you're dipping your toes in. Just, hashtag just the tip. How are you liking it so far? What is the age of the dragon? What, yeah, what is, what is its age? 69 years old, hopefully. I have a very weird quote, and I, and I can't remember the context, but I have a very strange quote that I have saved in my quote system. And that's, that's not it, but that's a good one, too. I have a very strange one that suggests that, to, uh, that the number of dicks a dragon has is analogous to its age. It's kind of like how, you know, the, the rings in a tree trunk tells you how old it is. The number of penises a dragon has indicates how old it is. But I can't remember the context to it, so I'll, every once in a while, though, it'll pop up and I'll always be like, what the fuck? Anyway, so that's... That's the next major destination. Again, we're playing Oblivion. This is unmodded, and it's my first Oblivion experience. So, uh, premature apologies if I'm playing slowly. I... I... Because I am. You're, you're correct. I am playing slowly. Um, but it is... It is my... It's my first time in going slow and gentle. It is the way to... The virtue in a game like this. Was bound to have, that's right, Ape Llama exposed. Ape Llama's like, hey man, that's how it goes. Eventually, right? How many layers of show more should I... Fabinger says, how much should I reveal, Alex? The answer is yes. You enjoying it so far? Nice, man. I have a quote list. I think I have a quotes command. 156, Jesus, that's a lot of quotes. Yeah, I don't know if I, I can view the quotes through my stream, through my uh, chatbot app, but I don't know if there's a way for for you guys as viewers to view the quote list without going exclamation point quote space zero quote one, two, three, bu -bu 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 up to 155, I guess. You could do it that way, but it would take a minute. Because yeah, if you do exclamation point quote space followed by a number, then it will report that numbered quote to you, the viewer. But, I can't remember which one it is. Ape Llama, what are some other things you have queued up? Actually, I'll ask that of anybody. If there's anyone else in the chat who has uh, stream plans, or just game plans in general, but especially streamers, if there's any content creators or streamers in the chat. Do you have anything coming up that you're excited about? Do you like to plug? Especially Ape Llama, because he hit us with the raid. Oh, and also, do you have any uh, clips you'd like to share? 
any funny moments or or cool discoveries or interesting shit. I, I always like, especially if there were like any like really silly or cool moments that happened during your stream. I always love showing those things off when somebody raids me. As a, as kind of a as kind of a sample platter for those who weren't already following you. If you got anything you'd like to share. Oh, another troll friend. It seems like they call them trolls. Like these don't look at all like the trolls I would. They don't. They don't like. They don't look how I would expect an Elder Scrolls troll to look. An Elder Troll. They are unique, but yeah, not at all what I was expecting. You may doing some bio mutant. Yeah, I gotta look that one up because doesn't ring a bell. Like the name doesn't ring a bell, but it sounds like it's pretty new. So it, maybe I've seen it and just didn't realize I was looking at it. Dragon Age Origins, nice man. Got some rogue lights on deck, nice, nice. Solid choice, solid choice. Now we've seen this archetype before. See the winged lads. Probably drop that one. Oh, but they're they're both aggroed. I think I missed. Miss. Smack. Down you go. My sword's all bloody. Hell yeah. Metal. With that 57 difficult technical difficulties. You want to get into streaming if I'm good? Because yeah, I, it's it's a it's definitely a hobby that I enjoy. If anybody's ever like thinking about streaming, it's something I would encourage anyone to try it if they wanted to. It can be a it can be a very enjoyable hobby. It's, I, I recognize it's not for everybody, and you know it's one of those things where it kind of depends on what you want to get out of it. But, um, but I mean I I, I love it. So it's, it's my favorite it's my favorite hobby by a by a enormous margin. So it's something I encourage. Can I ask Flyfinger what kind of technical problems you're having? Because I you know I can't give like specific advice, but if there was something in particular in in a more general sense you were curious about, I'm happy to throw a couple pointers. Have a good night, APL Lama. Thanks. I know it is getting late. Thank you. Thank you for that raid. I, I appreciate you, buddy. Like I said, for you, if you enjoy, enjoy the kinds of games I play and the kind of variety of vibes I do, um, APL Lama is, d does some, some some of the same things that I do, but also, like he was saying, has more, has some, has some, like, direct, some, some directed ambitions as well. Talk about Dragon Age. That's not a short game. So if you like the, those kinds of long play types of deals, you know, longer playthroughs. This is a long playthrough too, but I kind of bounce around a lot, so... I want someone more focused, more laser-focused, like a like a pro gamer. April is a good guy, and he's just, a, he's just a chill guy. He's just a chill dude. I think you'll like him. Gonna be a hard time. Well, yeah, it's it, it can take a while, D-Man, yeah. And that's that's kind of why I... I don't necessarily want to say I caution people, but... Yeah, just expectations, why not? Because it, it can take a while to... You know, to, to like, start to gain an audience and you know and I'm not like I'm not gonna like make it sound like oh I'm some wise aging wit well I am aging but not some wise wizard who's who's made it who's you know traveled the internet world and seen and done it all like before April Lama raided I was at like eight viewers like you know I'm I'm I'm, I'm, I'm chump change right I'm, I'm small time but but I'm doing it for a while so it's like you know it's you, you definitely pick up on on things that work well for you and things where you've, that you've seen work well for others, and things that you've seen have not worked well for others, and things that have not worked well for you, that kind of thing. So you, you kind of like pick up some of the, the tools of the trade over time. And I've, I've, I've observed friends of mine, like, attempt streaming, and have very lofty, like, high ambitions. Because they think like, oh man, I'm gonna start streaming, I'm gonna make partner, I'm gonna like, I can quit my job, I can... You know, do this full time, and it's like, whoa! You know, it's like I gotta kind of pump the brakes after a certain point because that's you know, like that stuff. It's like it can happen, but whew, that's that's a lot. That's uh, that's the kind of stuff that, like, you know, very very f small percentage of people can even get close to. Like, I think, like, I'm not so much of a numbers guy, but but every once in a while, I'll, I'll kind of get a finger in the pulse. I think I looked looked at. 
Twitch Tracker, which is a, a pretty cool website for like kind of summarizing your channel. And I think it's that I like my current numbers right now on average puts me at about like the top one point one point like five what one point five like one point five zero percentage of Twitch streamers, which is not which on the one hand might sound cool, but then it's like well yeah that's because a, a lot of people are you know somewhere between zero or like ten viewers, whereas on average I'm usually around twelve to fifteen. So, but that's still very meager compared to, yeah, you know, the, the top 0.5% where, you know, you're getting 100 plus viewers on the regular. And crossing that gap is, uh, closing that gap is an enormous ravine, much like this one. It's like this one, which we were in earlier. I think when we came here, we came out this way. So... So for some, if their ambition is to like, oh yeah, I want to find immediate success, then it's like, ooh, that can take a while. So that's where I would caution pumping the brakes a bit. But if their ambition is, I just want to try it out, have fun, and maybe find a couple, you know, fellow gamers, fellow fellow like enthusiasts of the games that I play, then yeah, that's perfectly fine. You know, it's like just a matter of what you want to get out of it. But uh, but yeah, I just I, I usually caution for people who want to get into it that it can be very fun, but it can also be a grind. Um, if the goal is, you know, gaining a big audience. Like, it can happen. It's not that it's not doable, but it's it can take a while. And it can take a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of resources. Maybe not money resources, but time as a resource. So, and then there's other things that, you know, might be better to put that time elsewhere. You know, some people don't want to spend... If they want to make it, so to speak, it's like, usually the advice is you want to have a Twitch channel, but also a YouTube channel. It's like, do I want to spend my time managing a YouTube channel, editing videos, doing thumbnails? Like, do I want to do all that plus all this other bullshit? It's like, for some people, the answer is no. Perfectly understandable. So. But if the answer is like, nah, I just want to vibe out and play games with the homies, it's like, that's perfectly fine. You don't, you don't have to have a YouTube channel. If you want to stream on Twitch, that's like, perfectly fine. And... You know, you don't have to, like, do all those other things if you want to be successful as a streamer. There are successful streamers who, that's all they do. They stream and they don't, you know, fuck with the other stuff. But generally speaking, usually it's it's advised that, yeah, if you want to reach for the stars, then, yeah, it's a lot of extra effort that's to go into it. But not always. You know, a lot, lot, of, lot of speaking generically right now, obviously. If I forget this audio is tricky. Voices repeating. Oh, really? Um, Five Gear, have you already tried? Um, have you already tried like looking to see like if if like the audio was like, um, like what, what's the word? I'm trying to think like if you're if you've ever had it where like your computer's lagging and audio like keeps repeating like you hear like the audio on your computer go like bup 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 as like things are loading, things are like repeating. If your voice is doing that, I would maybe check to see if your CPU is getting overloaded. So, like, if you note that your audio is being weird and you're, like, seeing it happen, could you also then open, if you haven't tried it already, open Task Manager and go to the tab, I think it's the Performance tab, and check your CPU usage and see if your CPU utilization is, like, 100% or at 99. There's just a chance it could be your CPU struggling to, like, load balance all these things. Unless you've got, like, a super chunky CPU. Like, you might already be a super, you might have already tried this. And you might be super knowledgeable on, on like computer architecture. And if you are, you then what I'm saying is probably, you know, pretty meager. But if it isn't, then, um, and it's it's something to try at least. It's gonna be, oh, that's what I was doing. I was getting a torch. I was like, what am I going to my inventory for? Torch. It's two or three. Yeah. I'm aging. I mean, it's accurate. I'm an old man. I was I was uh I was at work the other day. I was I was in the office rather the other day, and I just mentioned because we have a new guy who just joined our team. He's like fresh out of college. He's like 21, 22, and I, I was joking with him about something, and I was like, "Hey man, remember I'm 33." And my team lead heard me say that. He's like, "You're 33." He's like, "Fuck man," which I which I I I take as a compliment. I think what he thought was, "Oh, Alex is still in his 20s," because I don't know. Maybe people are just being nice, but people say that I look young. But then it's like, I'm actually in my mid-30s. They go, oh, fuck. So, it's like, I'm I'm getting out there. I'm not the frisky young lad I once was. I'm now a frisky old man. 
I'm a frisky fucking weirdo. Ethically frisky, though. Ethically frisky. None of that unethical friskiness. What's up, Isonic? How are you feeling? Feeling pretty good, man. I'm feeling, that, that's a very nice thing to ask. How are you feeling this year? This year's been... This year's been a mixed bag. But from for me personally, it's been a net positive. Grace and I got engaged. That's pretty cool. So we're, we're getting married next year. So that alone is pretty huge. We're moving in together. Um, probably either later ne this year or early next year. So got some got some pog, you know, got some some net pog pog sative, if you will. So, so I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. Me selfishly, I'm doing okay. The rest of humanity, I I don't feel as good about sometimes. You know, some parts of humanity are having it kind of shitty right now, but but for me selfishly, if I just don't look, watch the news and I don't have concerns for fellow human beings, then everything's great. Everything's gravy. Friends from other channels to watch. Yeah, like, yeah, if you've, like, you know, kind of made friends over the years, like, internet homies. And you would kind of want to vibe out with them. Yeah, that's perfectly understandable. Yeah, it's like... Like, if you if you don't necessarily need to, like, chase any, like, big ambitions, then, yeah, just, just like, streaming with the homies, that's, that's a perfectly, like, valid, you know, use case to get into streaming and just try, just trying it out. Is that, that alone can be super fun, like... Having just friends that you're vibing out with in your chat. And you stream like, you know, maybe once every few weeks, maybe once a month. Or or more, you know, it doesn't have to be like, you know, you can be infrequent. Um, you don't even have to stream on Twitch. You can just stream your game content to, to, to like Discord on like a Discord call. Because I have some friends that do that. They don't even like, they're not on like a publicly discoverable platform. They just like vibe out with like in voice chat with their homies on Discord. And that's like with the screen share and that's good enough for them. And honestly, it's... It works really well. I was hanging out with the homies. Right, yeah, exactly. Some of the funny words to make the kid same five hunger. Yeah, I, I, I know some of the magic words, and sometimes I even say them in the right order and make people think I'm very smart. Yeah, if the audio is. Yeah, I'm thinking about more about the microphone thing. If it's like, if like you feel like the microphone, if like you, when you like listen back to your voice, if it's getting stuck. If your voice is like going ba 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 ba, uh, boo, 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 like it's getting, it's kind of like lagging out like that. My f my knee jerk thought is yeah, it might be CPU getting overloaded. And if it is, if the yeah, I guess that's the next thing. Okay, so I it's like you know I'm I'm having audio troubles and my audio is like getting lagged out. What do I do then, Alex? Like at that point, then if your CPU is getting overloaded, then I would look to see I would look on Task Manager and see what things. Are, util are are using the most CPU CPU juice because like there'll be a percentage of, of, for like certain processes like process A will have will be taking 13% of your CPU process B is taking four, is taking 4% then process C is taking 68% you go whoa fuck so like that like oh that one is is taking up the most utilization so if like you got browser tabs open you got you know this other thing going in the background it's like maybe close that if you can um and if that's not an option, sometimes the answer is I gotta get an upgrade, a component to my computer. You know, I gotta upgrade my CPU. I gotta get more RAM. Like, that's a possibility. It would be a shame for you have to, for you to have to spend money, you know, to to get into a hobby like this. Because ideally, you'd be able to, you know, not have to to put down a bunch of money. But. You know, something to consider. The other good news is that graphics, if you if you were in a point where you needed a graphics card update or something, um, upgrade rather, um, for a minute their graphics cards were ex exuberantly overpriced and they have come down significantly for the past, ouch. How'd you get in the water, dude? But yeah, they've come down quite a bit. Oh, gee, they're fucking me up. Jesus. Wow, these guys hurt. These guys hurt, and they don't squirt. Jesus! Oh my God, he's he's like knocking me around like a like a fucking ragdoll. I think I might need to dive in. Is there a third one? Or am I an idiot? I'm gonna I'm gonna drink some some juice. Give me some of that good good, some the juice. I'm gonna drink a damage health poison. No, I'm not gonna do that. Um, I'm just gonna drink one of these. Do I have a crappier sorcery potion? I should drink those first. 
Yeah, give me, give me that. Uh, give me the weak sauce first. Give me this one too. Oh, are they healing? Because I got one of them down to like very low HP. I think they heal. That's a problem. Alright, give me more of the juice. There's a strong healing too if things get desperate. Jesus Christ, they do so much damage. Good lord. Jeez. I, I got a good one earlier. Five points for 20 seconds. I'll, I'll keep that in my back pocket. So th just that I don't have a ton of these. Healing, specifically. I'm gonna, I'm gonna kite these guys for a minute. So I can get... Oh, they fell in the water. See, I like to focus on like one, kind of whittle them down a little bit. Jesus, the knockback! Oh my god, the knockback is is ridiculous. I think it might be. I wonder what it is. Is it because my fatigue is fine? I wonder if my it's either my agility or my endurance. Something is causing me to get staggered real bad sometimes. Where, like, they hit me and my character goes, Whoa! And then, as I'm, like, reeling, I'm getting hit more. Also, something damaged my intelligence, which I don't like. Did that kill him? No way. Oh, no, they, they can swim. Yeah, well, they don't so much swim as they sprint underwater. That's actually hilarious to watch. <laughs> ah, yes. The mighty troll. The mighty aqua troll. Swimming in its natural environment. Let's look, look out to get my heal back, health, health back for at least a little bit. Also, sorry, I, I, I realized I fell way behind in chat. Can I, can I scroll up? You no, know, sometimes if I... On this one. There we go. Sometimes there's a sweet spot. There we go. Just find a wife, MBD. Yeah. Well, we're not married yet, but we're, we're engaged. Yeah, we'll be getting married in April of next year. Steam friends can. Well, yeah, yeah. There's the, that's the other thing too. Yeah, there's like the Steam broadcast option, or like the or the the viewing option, I suppose. Oh, it's like it's echoing. Oh, if it's echoing Five Finger, then yeah. Yeah, if you're getting like echo. I was thinking it was like it was lagging out intermittently. Yeah, if it's echoing, then that's that's a, a separate problem. That's probably more of a like how your audio is getting picked up by your microphone kind of kind of situation. So, yeah. If your commentary is getting picked up from your like, yeah, if you have, if you have like what I have right here, like a microphone and then speakers on your desktop, and you're not like wearing a headset or something, then that can sometimes happen. Where your let's see if I can get past these guys. Back to the surface. There we go. Oop. The other one is still stuck down there, so I can focus this guy. Because I think, yeah, I think they heal. There we go. So one's dead. Oh god, I'm stuck on something. Uh oh. What am I stuck on? Okay. Oh my god. Jesus. I keep getting, I keep getting stuck in the level geometry. Let me drink another potion. Getting the crap eat out of it by these guys. I'm glad I took one of them out, though. It's huge. God, I, I'm just getting pummeled. It's so wild when I, when I fight one of these guys, it's not a problem, but yeah, fighting two back to back, it's like I just can't get an upper hand. Get my 
Can't get my can't get my catch my breath. He just attacks so fast. Do you not get tired? Good lord. Dude, I can't do this. I, I gotta run away. Oh, Jesus. I can't even, like, fight this one. Guess I could do what I did earlier and hide in the water. I'm just... Feel... Feel shitty having to, like, game the system like that. Oh, I'm gonna... I slipped anyway. Shit. And I guess... I guess this kind of forces me to take a break. I've managed to get a heal. Yeah, the, they're out healing. The damage that I can do is the problem. Okay, let's get a... Let's get a full... Full bar of health. <laughs> Thing is, I'm not very good at melee. Oh my god, I, I, even with a full health bar, I cannot, I cannot like out melee them. I think my, I think my best hope is to just drink a, like, is to more or less just go ham on the sorcery. And hope for the best. Cause I I can't like out damage this guy. This is it. Holy shit! I can't believe that was such a struggle. Cause I've fought trolls so many times I've never fought two of them. Good lord. Let's see. So I entered that fight with like thirteen sorcery potions. Actually, well, yeah, twelve like twelve or thirteen, then one down here. I used over half of those things. I'm just this, these two fights. Yeah, their region is insane. Their region is insane, and I just I couldn't like out DPS them melee wise. So I was like spending all my energy healing myself, to keep myself alive, and I couldn't combat their other their other pros. And of course, and the other problem is that my gear is so worn down. Like, look at this. All my armor is busted. Actually, yeah. Literally, all of my armor is busted. I have no armor right now. Well, I have some armor from the shields. Um, My sword isn't doing horrible, but it's still... It's, it's rough. Yeah, powerful. Yeah, yeah. I, that lesson has just been learned or, or relearned that, yeah. In groups, these guys are monsters. Supposedly, yeah, I know in, in other, in like D&D &D and other universes, yeah, fire can pierce through their region. Fire and acid, yeah. That's how it goes in Skyrim. Oof, rock. That's rough, man. That's rough. We fucking got him, man. God damn, that was in some ways harder than the necromancer orgy we interrupted earlier. Shit was gnarly. But though to make it in, that's what makes it intense, man. It's like uh, Stotes was saying earlier, like you don't want to. That's why we have these potions, is to help bail us out when we're getting bodied by big bastards. These are some big bastards, and we got bodied, all right. How do we? I think we came here from the water, didn't we? I think we. Yeah, I think we emerged from down here. Of course, we have the, the amulet that lets us breathe forever in the water. So, let's see if there's anything else down here. I don't think that there is. There we go. Oh, but yeah, sorry. I, 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 we I, I kind of got cut off there. Pursuant to the conversation of audio clipping or, or audio echoing, because yeah, it's a few things. If it's just a matter of your microphone picking up things from your speakers, like if you have speakers, you're, like if you're not using headphones, or if you're using headphones, but the it's like the open ear headphones where there's like noise that emanates and the microphone's picking up the background noise. There's a few things you can do. There, you can put a noise gate on your microphone. Um, a noise gate. Usually, there's like a well. There might be hardware options for it, but usually it's a software option. And if you're using OBS, OBS, let me think about this. Yes, OBS does have a noise gate option. It's in the audio filters options. You can add a noise gate. A noise gate 
basically makes it such that if a like here I'll, I'll demonstrate so when i'm talking into my microphone i'm when i'm really close to the microphone the volume is like such that it's passing the threshold of the noise gate so my microphone is picking it up but if i don't say anything for a second and then like snap my fingers from kind of far away watch this There we go, yeah. So it's like I have to get it kind of close for it to pick up. And if I don't, I'll be quiet for a second. Oh, it picked, it picked that one up. There we go. Yeah, so it's like, so basically it helps to eliminate background noise. Because if it's like a quiet noise or a noise below this decibel, the microphone doesn't register it or doesn't receive it. Or it doesn't transmit, I suppose, a better, better app, a better scripture. So that's, and that's huge. If you've got a lot of background noise, a noise gate, just a modest noise gate on your audio setup is huge. Um, for eliminating echo, background noise, that kind of thing. Um, another thing you can do, um, to reduce echo, that kind of thing. If, if it's not so much speaker echo or, or, you know, things bleeding from other sources. But if it's like, oh, it's, I, I have, if it's like I'm on a Discord call and my audio is getting picked up and is like getting registered as like computer noise. Because in OBS, there's like, there's, I think they call it desktop audio. And desktop audio in my case right now is the game. And if I was on a Discord call... There's a chance, if I don't set it up right, that Discord will consider my audio as part of desktop audio. Which is fine until you add your microphone and then you have two Alexes speaking at a, you know, almost the same frequency and it's like weird and it sounds goofy. So if that's the case, then it's a little bit more involved because then you could try muting one, but if you mute one, it might screw up, you know, other, uh, how like viewers could hear you. So yeah, if you're getting like duplicate versions of yourself coming in through OBS where one's like a desktop audio thing and one is the microphone then the solution is a little bit more tricky you would need to uh, the, the solution I would advocate for at that point would be to use a digital mixer I use one called voice meter banana but you can use a digital mixer mixer like a voice meter banana to route certain audio sources to certain channels and, and then you can mute or unmute those channels in OBS. Um, there are, are tutorials to describe it in a much more eloquent sense. So if you wanted to pursue, if you needed to pursue that direction, I would just look on Google or on YouTube, uh, voice meter banana uh, tutorial. And that would, I'm pretty sure, lead you down uh, the, the path that you needed to go into because um, it's not that hard necessarily. But it can be intimidating. Like when you when you launch when you install and then launch Voice Meter Banana, it's like, oh fuck, what are all these controls? What the fuck do I do? Like I I use Voice Meter Banana all the time, and I use it. I use like three controls for it, and I ignore the rest. So it's like there's a bunch of shit on there that I just don't need to fuck with. So it's like it's a little intimidating at first, but once you once you learn like, oh, this is the stuff I care about, the rest I can ignore, then it's not so bad. That's a, okay, yeah, of course. No, I know it's getting late. I'm probably going to wrap up in a bit myself just because I've been live for almost four hours. Try not to go super late or super long with my streams just because, you know, still a little dainty after my surgery, so I'm not overdoing it. And it's getting late anyway, so I want to wrap it up in, in a bit. Um, and, and I know I've been talking a lot and and being very, very ranty and slow tonight, so I haven't made as much progress as I would like, but we did just clear up this dungeon. And the final boss... These two fucking troll motherfuckers was chonky. These guys were thick and not nice. Have a good night, White Flare. No, I yeah, I, I recognize I'm I'm I'm, I'm long-winded sometimes, and it's getting late. No, no, no shame. People got to rest up, get 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 ready for tomorrow. I totally get it. I, I I never take it personally when when people have to hop off or if it's getting late. If they just got other stuff they got to do, it's like yeah, I totally get it. Is perfectly permissible. Actually, I lied. No one's allowed to leave ever. I'm kidding. I'm kidding, I promise. That is it for this dungeon. 
was a very long dungeon, not necessarily because of the troll monsters we were fighting, but because... It's because I am slow. That's, that's part of the joy of this game, or at least that's what I tell myself. I tell myself I'm playing it like a real Oblivion gamer. By being very... By really savoring the game. So... Oh wait, did I not explore? Ooh, maybe there is one little... One little spot to explorificate. Ooh, look at this. A chest that I missed. Oh my. 8%? Wow, that's pretty good. That's real good. Let's do this. A few more of these potions just to burn those ingredients, which are pretty heavy anyway. So our, our, our armor is in a sad state of affairs right now because literally all of our armor got fucking flayed by those troll monsters. And we could put this on, you know, to get a little bit more. Or this to get significantly more. But still, 15 is pretty... pretty shitty. Um, we found a robot deflection earlier, which is good, but then there's this guy, 8%. Suddenly, we're feeling... we're looking pretty. And, well, not literally. We're looking awful. But we're... numbers-wise, we're looking pretty good. The downside is we don't take... we're not... we're not building our light armor stat as much. So what I might actually do is still wear... Uh, this stuff, for the time being. And then if we- and then switch to the robe of warding if we're fighting something scary. My reason being is that if I'm fighting small enemies and it's- and nothing's really a threat, then it's fine. I-, I then I don't mind, you know, taking a little bit more damage because it means that we're feeding our light armor skill more. But if we're fighting something scary, then yes, I'll switch to this guy because then survival, uh, is a higher priority than building stats. So that's, that's a very good find. And I may, feel like I'm able to appreciate it more now that I've observed that the shield constant effect really, even a small amount, really adds a fuck ton of defense. Which right now is at a bit of a premium. And to be clear, Um, I'm an idiot. To be clear, I'm an idiot. Oh, this one. I was like, what do I click? Yeah, we haven't been here yet. Lost sump. Like, I- I- I read that word somewhere. Sump. Like, I- I was- I was in- I was reading or playing something and the word sump came up and I was like, wait, like a sump pump? And I had to look it up and I was like, oh, that's what that word means. It's like in a generic sense. And I've already forgotten what the definition was, but I remember being like, oh, that's a, that's an, that's a common noun. Because when I hear sump, I just think sump pump, the thing you have in your basement. Um, salamander, oh my. Light armor, it's not very good. Still though, really good value. Or hammer of enfeeblement. Cool as fuck. Heavy as fuck, Jesus. Yeah, it's so heavy that it's probably... Not really worth picking up, but still. Thing is scary. Oh my goodness, CD. CD, what in the world? Thank you, my friend. That is a very generous rate. Thank you, my friend. CD, how is... Let me think about this. What's CD been doing? CD, you're doing Skyrim, right? You're doing some Skyrim. Um, I think it's unmodded. Or no, no, or is it mod? Crap, I can't remember. I'm trying, I'm trying to go off memory. I know CD's been playing a lot of things. She does... Uh, Project Zomboid, she's done many a Soulsborne ad adventure, but I think her most recent project is Skyrim. Modded, that's what it is, cool. Uh, CD, thank you. Thank you for that raid. Let's do a quick shout out for CD. The ho the true homie for real, CD90, who just recently underwent a significant rebranding. She's got a bunch of dope new emotes, got a sick overlay, got a cool new... Uh, like, uh, like profile, what, what's the word, a logo. She's, she's, she's reinvented herself and it looks awesome. Her channel looks great. Um, CD, I know you've, you've been working real, real hard at, uh, yeah, getting, getting things all 
getting things all squared away. I know it's been a, a ton of work and it and it shows because your stuff looks incredible. Was was uh, was lurking not too long ago. I, I mean, I've I've chatted in your chat a couple times, and each time I'm there, I'm like, damn. She worked so hard on that shit, and, and the person that the artist you commissioned did a great job. And on top of that, CD is also a fellow variety streamer, a Soulsborn and Elder and Elder Scrolls uh, enthusiast, and just a general awesome person. Uh, her community is full of a bunch of sweethearts and a and a bunch of bunch of cuddly teddy bears, just awesome awesome people. So if you enjoy Elder Scrolls games, you enjoy. Uh, some of the variety things that I do, and, and like, or, or, or the Soulsborne games. If, if you were already here, and you don't follow CD, do yourself a favor and give her a fo at least give her a look. Give her give her channel a look. Um, I, I think you will, I think you'll you'll be happy. You'll be happy you did. And if you came from CD's chat, fr from her raid, and you weren't following her, you probably already know what I'm about to say. Make sure you, you go back and follow her, because she is an excellent person. And she's got a lot of stream projects uh that she's that she's got uh that she's like working on again talk about modded skyrim or project zomboy in fact i'll ask you cd are there other things you have queued up that way if somebody was like sitting there they're thinking to themselves well man cd she plays skyrim that's cool zomboid yeah that's dope but what if she plays game xyz and then cd says actually alex i'm thinking about playing game xyz and they go oh, and their heads explode um if your if your head is susceptible to exploding, I would advise you know being mindful of that. But otherwise, I always love getting to hear what kinds of fun things, uh, what kinds of fun things, streamer friends uh, and or otherwise are like have queued up because there's a lot of times when when there's when there's conversations like that, like oh yeah, I'm looking forward to playing X Y Z. Your their their passion fuels my passion. So it's it's a fun thing. It's a fun thing to, to share an experience. By the way, we're playing Oblivion. This is my first ever playthrough. Uh, this is our character. His name is Sad Maroon. Uh, apologies to those who've heard me tell the story before, but uh, the long and short of it is when I was messing around in the character creation for this for this game, the the character generation tool. Um, I had three goals. I wanted to make him his head as round, large. I'm sorry, round, purple and sad as possible and i think we accomplished all three of those things it's our big purple man his name is sag maroon because he's a sad little dude he's got a an impressive underbite and a little crooked nose i this is he's my beautiful son and nothing can ever take that away from me so it's bl uh, my first playthrough of oblivion no mods just going in Going in dry, no lube. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, it, it's it's fun though. We, we're uh, we're we're pretty early on. We're only level nine, and we are on the path to Kavach for part of the main quest. So we we got a ways to go, but we're getting there. Um, CD, were there any clips you would like to share? By the way, are there were any goofy moments from your channel, from your stream rather that you'd like to share. If there was anything like silly or cool or goofy, goofy like glitches or shit like that. I, I always love seeing those kinds of things, especially when somebody raids me. It's like, oh, if they have any fun things they like to share from funny moments that happened. By the way, we are slightly over encumbered, but that's okay, because we can just drop some shit. We're exploring a dungeon right now. I think this is most likely the last little little section of said dungeon. Yeah, we got a little... This one was, um... Yeah, Firelight Dungeon, and we actually just fought... There was a room earlier that had two trolls. We fought trolls on, like, a onesie-twosie basis plenty of times. But we fought two trolls simultaneously, and that proved to be way more of a challenge than I, than I was prepared for, than I was, like, ready for. Spiritually, mentally, sexually, I in many ways, I was unprepared. Not this time, though. This time, I'm ready. Of course, this is only one of them. One of them is not too bad. And my dude is primarily a spellcaster. So a lot of times I'm backpedaling, I'm trying to get distance, and then when, you know, when the chips are down, I can hit him with some melee. Oh, I was, I was, I was, um, I was like, why is my guy swinging so weird? It's because I was crouched like an idiot. Even that one guy that took me to about half health, though, so these guys, these guys are not nice. Contrary to popular belief, but, but trolls are actually kind of mean sometimes. By the way, again, thank you to CD and to all the CD's viewers for coming in on this very nice raid on a Friday night, uh, but also recognize it is getting kind of late. 
So if people have to hop off, get to bed, get get a snack, um, you know, if you got other stuff you got to do, I totally get it. I'm not gonna like. I, I promise, won't be sad that the view count goes down or that you know that things start to get quiet as the evening draws to a close for people. Because I totally understand. I'll probably go in for another maybe 30 or so minutes, 30 or 40 minutes. But um, I actually had uh, surgery uh, about three or four weeks ago, three three and a half weeks ago, um, on my throat because I had polyps on my vocal cords. And I'm feeling much better. Things are so much better now. I'm feeling more comfortable. But still, I'm. it was only three and a half or so weeks ago. And I'm trying to make sure I don't overdo it. So it's not going to be a super long stream. So we're, we're just kind of chilling. Just vibing out. And um, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. And it was... it was. Um, you might think to yourself, like, holy shit, surgery on your vocal cords. That sounds hardcore, Alex. Are you metal AF? It was actually pretty chill. Because... Um, there were no stitches or anything. Ouch! Jesus, he like interrupted my spell. Uh, there was no stitches or anything. They, they, um, they knocked me out with general anesthesia and then went down my throat with a laser and just nicked it right off. So if you look on my neck, there's, there's no, uh, there's, there, there's copious underbeard, but, but there's no stitches. There's no stitches, so. I was knocked out, they went down my throat with a laser, a little camera, and just took care of that sucker, and then I was on vocal rest for a week, and then slowly easing back into the swing of things so it was weird and um the ongoing joke that i had with my friends like I, I was like texting my like my friend group the morning of the surgery and then before they wheeled me in i was like all right boys brb about to deep throw the laser because i had the opportunity to make it weird and i was not going to pass it up the oblivion troll yeah they are I, like i underestimated them because fighting one by itself not too bad but man two trolls is Way spiced than I was ready for. Also, uh, free dead body. Hey, hey, who who left a dead treasure hunter? Actually, no. I'm sorry. He's not. He he wasn't left here. He was guarding the treasure chest. I'm um, sorry, bud. Sorry, sorry about you. But with fur gear, dude, going into a cave like this and fighting trolls with fur gear, not even enchanted, but just with. You know, a, a generic stuff like this. Who, buddy? No, no wonder he got bodied. Poor fella. Calming touch. Yeah, tell me how that worked out for you. I guess calming touch would work for, a, for like, you know, maybe ten seconds, but it's not enough time to get away from those trolls. Those things are quick bastards, and there's apparently still more left over. Getting some water. Understandable. I'm a big fan. Big fan of drinking water myself. Uh, for anybody in the audience who might think, be thinking to yourselves, oh boy, I would love to have polyps on my vocal cords so I could have larynx surgery. If you, if that ever does happen to you and you're on the mend, make sure you drink lots of water. My surgeon, my ear, nose, and throat doctor informed me that uh, one, of the one, of the one of the worst things you can do to your voice is to let yourself, whoops, wrong spell is to let yourself, is to cast the wrong spell, and then is also to let yourself get dehydrated, because dehydration is really harsh in the vocal cords. Um, they also say not to, the obvious things, don't yell very much, but also don't whisper. Because whispering kind of scrunches up the, the larynx a little bit, kind of strains the larynx, larynx in ways that are actually more harmful than yelling, at least in some ways. And then there's, there's like things that are probably seemingly obvious, like don't clear your throat, like the, you know, like ahem, ahemming aggressively to clear your throat. Um, if you've got like, you know, if you've got some gunk in there, just try drinking lots of water. Or maybe kind of, kind of like do like a low, like, mm, like ways to more, more gently clear things out and don't like forcefully clear your throat because that can, that can strain you more, more than you might, than, than most might think. So just, just ways to to have good habits and whatnot. Just ways to be kinder on your voice, especially if you're streaming or or if you do podcasts or or radio or TV, any any kind of thing where you're talking a lot. You know, ways to to be easy on yourself to avoid overdoing it. Mr. Void, what's up, bud? Got some... Oh, dude. That is a... That's an impressive combo. That's also a 12.10 a.m. on a Friday night combo. Quesadilla and tandies and coffee, Void. I love, I love it, man. Whenever I, whenever I hear the word tendies used either ironically or unironically, I'm like, I feel like I get transported back in time to a simpler era. 
where of a, a simpler era of people like memeing about tendies and good boy points. That's it's, it was a good time. It was a good time of like the internet where that was like the spiciest meme. That sounds hella chill, man. What can I ask? I, I'm curious about the coffee option, because you know I'm I'm a fan of drinking coffee on weekends, specifically on weekends, as like an indulgence. Because Void and I, you know, we, we used to work at the same place, at the same office, and, you know, we were surrounded by people that drank coffee on the regular. But I, I usually don't drink coffee on, like, during during work hours, because for me, coffee's like a treat. So I usually drink it on on weekends, like once a week on weekends. That's the other thing, by the way, if you have vocal stuff like I have, they also advise to not overdo it on caffeine. Because caffeine dehydrates you, or can dehydrate you, so you drink lots of water to kind of counteract it. Speaking of which, don't mind if I do. So yeah, just things like that to hopefully not overdo it. Should have known he was gonna make his moves. So I'm gonna kind of backpedal while I'm slapping this man. Electricity. There we go. Yeah, we, we can out DPS him when we, when we tenderize him a little bit with the lightning followed by swords, but our, our sword skills are not that good. So whenever we're fighting a dude like this, with just our sword, it can be a little spicy. Sleep schedule's kind of fucked up anyway, yeah. But the cap- okay, yeah, so like the caffeine's not really too much of an issue, that's good. Oh, Elva- yeah, yeah, dude, I- I've not- I'll confess, I actually have not watched that, but I- I think I know the one you're referring to. And that sounds like a, a fun classic to to revisit. That sounds like a good time, bud. Um, earlier Stotes was in here. I don't know if he's still listening in, but Stotes popped in a little bit earlier. We were kind of we were we were kind of riffing on uh, playing D and D. Strong. Ooh, that's pretty good. Playing Dungeons and Dragons with the homies, and of course Stotes and and you and me. We you know all three of us have many mutual friends, and I I invoked. I didn't. I didn't. Say, I didn't name names, but I was telling. We were kind of joking about how it's like, yeah, we know a few people that when we play D and D with them, they get a little min maxi because they've played the game for multiple decades and they they know the builds that get that squeeze the the most juice out of out of a, out of a you know a, a character archetype. How to make a mage that is ridiculously overpowered. How to make a fighter that that you know casts sword. And slings dice like a boss, like how to how to really maximize the potential of a class because they've you know they've done it dozens of times. And I was like, I'm not gonna name names, but Stotes might know who I'm, like a, a few people that I'm referring to. And 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 uh, and Void, you you might know of a few individuals as well where it's like, yeah, they they've they're, they're like you know we have friends of ours that are well into their forties and started playing Dungeons and Dragons when they were like you know seven or eight years old. So it's like. People who've literally been playing Dungeons and Dragons for 30 plus years. So it's, of course, they would acquire the forbidden knowledge of how to, how to make a busted ass character. It's no wonder, right? Pretty wild though. It's pretty wild to think of, of like, having, especially if they've been playing like with the same group, the idea of having that much experience in a system like that is remarkable. Except for this dungeon, by the way, it was a. Uh, we did find some pretty cool stuff, actually. Some pretty cool stuff. It was a pretty tough dungeon. Um, not a single human character, like NPCs, just all monsters. And and the tr nothing like even special, just lots of trolls. And man, those things were real dick twisters. Let me tell you, real butt slappers. Oh, wait, um. Yes, this is the right way, because I gotta go out this way. Wait a second, Deep Canyon. Did I go that way? Hold on, this was the... Oh, 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 oh. And that led... To the... Oh, okay, never mind. I remember the, the, the lost sump, I just couldn't remember the other stuff. Oh, those notes, yeah, yeah, have a good night, bud. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, if you were curious, I don't know if, if you know this, but Void is 
I won't say last names, but Void is Robert. And then Robert, you probably know who Stotes is. Because that is more or less what, what we call him. It's always fun when it's like, like, here are two people I know IRL. How do I indicate who they are to each other with, while staying respectful of, you know, privacy and not just saying the last names in front of, you know, on the internet. It's, you know, you never know who's watching. You uh, you never know who's watching. It's like, I want to be, I want to be mindful. Privacy is, is important. Pretty sure it's this one. But have a good night, though, Stoats. Thanks for hanging out, buddy. And thank you as well for, for sharing some, some good intel and some quality videos and quality memes. Oh my god, we're outside. We were in that dungeon for a minute. What a breath of fresh air. Uh... There we go. Don't need the torch. Oh no, it's okay, bud. No, you were here for, for at least a few hours. Stoats, no, no apologies, man. Glad to have you, bud. I'll see you in... I'll, I'll, I'll say what the kids say. I'll see you on the flippy dippy. And then someone will tap me on the shoulder and be like, Alex, nobody says that. Or, well, no, not yet, but I, I'm trying to get ahead of the curve. Give it like just a few years and the Zoomers will... Oh, I guess... In a few years, the Zoomers, the, the Gen Z years will, will be like, you know, graduating college. But whatever we call, you know, high schoolers in a few years, they'll be saying, see you on the flippy dippy. And when that day happens, I'll be so excited because I'll be such a trendsetter. Now there is, yeah, there's a shrine up here. Then there was also some ruins. I think that's our destination, by the way. Yeah, that's Kavach. You can tell because it is like very obvious walls. Castle walls, you can see them in the distance. There were some ruins. I'm gonna check out as well. Video games and anime. That is the correct way to... That's, that's just a well-fulfilled life. In any capacity. So. In fact, Void, even before your retirement, I remember on many occasions saying, Hey, yo, uh, uh, Robert... Q Void, because that's his full name. I'm just going to dox him. Uh, his name is Robert Q Void. Let's say, hello, Robert Q W Void. Uh, and he would say, hello, Alex Q Super Hobbit. Um, and I would say, yeah, what you been up to? And he'd be like, well, I've been playing games and enjoying anime titties. Sometimes he would say, I've been playing anime titties and enjoying games. Um, and every time I was very proud of him. What's up, uh, JD? Good to see you, bud. The fine, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Void is been what some would refer to as a, uh, a connoisseur of the finer things. So, nobody could accuse him of not having his priorities straight, and I'm here for it. Yeah. I've been doing well. I've been doing well. Things have been pretty chill. Um, got a lot of things that I've, I'm, like, wanting to do with the stream, specifically. Because, obviously, we've got Oblivion that we're getting back into. I want to get back into Morrowind, uh, Morrowind, Morrowind Randomizer. Which is something I haven't streamed in like two or three years, but I, I like there's things I want to do to to enhance uh, to enhance that that thing that I was doing. The, you know, that the, what am I trying to say? Enhance that aspect of the stream when I was streaming that a couple years ago. Because it was a lot of fun, but there's things I want to do to switch it up. And then I want to do more Corruptions. And then I've also, every once in a while, I will make the very good mistake that is watching somebody stream Rim RimWorld. And that's dangerous, because whenever I watch somebody play RimWorld, it's like, oh man, I get the itch. I get the, I get the itchy scratchies. Because then I, it makes me want to play that shit. So it's like there's other things like that I want to get back into. So, so there's a lot of things that I would like to do. But only so many hours in the day. Only so many hours of daylight, so I'm... Like, I'm, I'm frequently feeling torn, but in a good way. It's nice... Feeling, feeling like there's all these things that I want to do. Means means I'm never bored. i try the sneak attack. One times damage. Yeah, it's... I guess maybe it, like, bypasses re, uh, uh, damage resistance. I don't do the sneak attack all that often, but... When I didn't have a lot of mana anyway, it seemed like an, an okay strap. 
It's a goblin nose. I'm I'm kind of circling the perimeter. I'm kind of circling it. I'm I'm like a toilet. I'm like swirling around the toilet right now. I'm I'm, I'm a I'm a swirling toilet. Basically, I'm basically looking for like other monsters or bad guys, and I'm also looking for other outside entrances because sometimes you'll see like little secret entrances. Excuse me. This is a very large set of ruins, and it's actually not on the map yet. It tells me I have not found the entrance yet. Oh. Alright, I see you. These skirmishers... ...are a little spicy sometimes. Bitterfish. I'm guessing that... ...that label, Bitterfish, is probably... Like goblin factions, because we've seen the white goblins, we've seen uh some other kind, and then we've seen these guys, so. And I at one point I had assumed that that prefix was like a indicator of their quality, but now I'm thinking that it's not so much a quality indicator than it is a um music, excuse me, that it is like a, like a faction indicator. Of course, the skirmisher part means that, or berserkers, berserkers are also scary, so that's, that's a label of like, you got something spicy to fuck with. Ouch. Using like my full magicka juice. I, oh, I, I, I kind of overdid it, that's okay. Silver arrows. Oh, I feel... I feel... Fancy that he was using silver arrows on me. On little old me. Not sure I was worth it. Hmm. Seems like... In anything ever, if you see... Skulls mounted on a pike like this, it's like, oh... Goblins. Gerb gerblins. Guess they're bitter fish because they like the fishies. Oh, my strength was buffed. That's why my I'm at twenty fifty. Actually, I'll probably need to drop some things. Let's just grab a bunch of stuff and make some potions. Nothing of use. So I could stand to spend some of these resources I'm just kind of sitting on. Corn and scales. I mean, it makes sense that the, that the fish meat you would eat. I hope they're not eating the scales. That just sounds... Sounds... Kind of... Kind of unpleasant. It's stuck in your teeth. Um, let me guess. More goblins? Yep. What a, what a chat. He just tanked that shit and didn't bat an eye. He just like stood. Almost T-posing in a, in a dominant state. Of course, he still died, but still he was unfazed. Okay, so we got the name now. It's Miss Miss Garand. On the map now. This is a neat, this is probably the most elaborate set of ruins I've I think I've seen in this game. Like usually it's just one segment of this. I'm guessing there's pro yeah, here's an entrance right here. This is probably the most complete set of ruins I've seen. It's the entrance. Sometimes you'll find... Some, like, treasure chests or, or like, bags of goodies. In these little... In these formations right here. Also, my water's getting a little bit low. Give me one sec. I'm gonna take a quick BRB. Um, it's Friday night. We're... 
we're playing games like a bunch of nerds. Uh, in my case, it's uh, Oblivion. This is my first ever Oblivion playthrough, and we are still pretty early on. But we got, uh, we, which is a good thing. It means we got a lot, of, a lot of game left for us, which is good. Uh, we just stumbled upon a, a interesting looking set of ruins. I was commenting earlier, this seems like the most complete set of ruins I've seen this game. Usually you get like one little, little, little sliver of one of these spires and maybe like a piece of a tower and that's it. This time it's pretty damn full. It's also full of bad guys, but goblins and such. I'm um, gonna poke around a little bit outside first. See if there's anything else worth snagging, but for sure we'll be, we'll be exploring the interior quite soon. I've also been snagging up uh, flowers and plants. We can make some more potions, just because I've got a bunch of ingredients I'm kind of sitting on. But I might as well put them to use. Just FYI, we're pro this will probably, like I said, we're probably going to wrap up and maybe, probably after this dungeon, you know, we'll, we'll explore the dungeon. If, if it's not super, super short, we'll probably wrap up the dungeon, then that'll be more or less what we call it. And then no stream tomorrow, but I plan on streaming Sunday. In fact, JD, who's in the chat, Mr. Jet Dive, I'll be joining Mr. Jet Dive as well as a couple of my other mods, some of my other homies. We're going to play some Fantasy Star Online. In fact, we'll be finishing, well, at least for the group of us, for the for, for the foursome of us, we'll be finishing Fantasy Star Online 2, uh, classic, PSO2 classic, tomorrow. Um, just because we, we've done probably as much of the game as about as, as we'd like before switching over to New Genesis, the, the newest version of the game. So, yeah, since it's like we, we've pretty much accomplished what we wanted, so we, that, what we set out to as a group, we'll probably be switching over to New Genesis. In fact, we might tinker with New Genesis uh, on Sunday as well, but that'll be our final PSO2 Classic stream. It's on my own, I finished the single player mode, the story, the story stuff. And overall found it to be pretty good. The, there were parts in the beginning and kind of towards the middle that I was kind of so-so on, but the stuff at the end was did a very good job of bringing it all home. Some dicey. I think I did see that void. I, that does sound familiar. I think I heard that there's a new update coming. Or is it a new update or maybe even like DLC? Like a, I can't remember, but it's, it was something significant. Something that was like announcement worthy and I was like, oh. It made me think of you because I was like, oh, I, I know of a, of at least one homie who is a dicey dungeon enjoyer. I get up there? We kind of cheese it. Yeah, not quite, not quite. I don't know if it's worth... I might have already been up there anyway. Nope, no, I have not, apparently. Oh, my fortify just ran out. That's okay, I need to... kind of power through some of these ingredients I'm, ho I'm, I'm hoarding anyway. All these scales... Skills and nitrogen. Yeah, let me get some damage health poisons. And peony seeds. How's about this? Black seed. Damage health. Pear. Perfect. Stroke fatigue and damage speed and damage health. Delicious. Stroke fatigue. Ah, that's boring. Got lots of damage health, apparently. Elf cup. Elf Cup Cap. I guess they would wear it when they're playing soccer or football or, or paintball. Like, that's that's what they use to protect their genitals. Damage willpower. So, yeah, just trying to... Oh, here we go. Resist poison. Yeah, I like the weird combinations. Not always good, but it's frequently interesting. Probably about it, isn't it? Red. Yeah, that's about it. Yeah, the alchemy in this game, and well, and Morrowind for that matter, can be full of strange surprises. Still, we're still pretty full though, so I'm gonna probably drop a couple things. Store health is pretty good, it's kind of heavy. I'm probably holding on to a number of things that I can drop. Yeah, 
Yeah, for instance. Oh, actually, no, that, that's the one I want to hang on to. Yeah, I can drop this guy, for instance. That's plenty. Okay, we're good. We Gucci. You wouldn't drink an elf. The way that was phrased, Robert, made me think of... Um, I'm sure you remember this. The, the PSAs they would show for a movie. It was like an anti-piracy ad or an anti-piracy PSA. And they'd be like, you wouldn't download a car. Don't download movies. And it's like, you wouldn't download a car. <laughs> Fuck you, I would if I could. That'd be awesome. Can you imagine back in the days of LimeWire? Let me just download car.exe. Although now, with 3D printers, I'm not saying you could download an entire car, but you could download a lot of the parts to eventually make a car, so... It, it makes me wonder if eventually, maybe, maybe you would be able to download a car. <laughs> at which point, at which point, who's laughing now, bitches? Stumbled upon a camp, by the way. Hey, what's up, Bola Cola? How was your stream, by the way, bud? Fight Umbra, says Bola Cola. I don't know what Umbra is, at least with regards to Oblivion. I, I think I remember Umbra was a sword in Morrowind. Oh, dead wolf. I'm guessing it might be in this game, too. Oh, it's a dog. A dog who had one gold. Everyone's dead. Well, the bandits are dead. Sounds like I missed the action, dude. Oh my god. Oh my god, Void, that's incredible. Oh, okay, so it's in this game too. Because, yeah, I remember it in Morrowind. But, uh, yeah, I wasn't sure it was in this game too. I, I know there's, there's some tie-ins like that. Since it's my first ever playthrough of Oblivion, because I, I, I've never... I've watched people stream this a little bit, but not much. Since it's my first ever playthrough, I, I really don't know, you know, I, I'm going in pretty blind. I'm going in pretty uninformed, which is kind of by design. You know, the idea is to not necessarily have a game plan. I mean, I'm trying, you know, I'll eventually play through the story, but I'm not like going in with any goals for like a specific build or getting a certain item or anything. I'm just, just kind of vibing. Yeah. Oh, it's one of those nice, I got you. Yeah, that's... I don't know if I, I don't know if I've seen that particular parody. That sounds fun, though. This makes me think that there's like more to, more to this little spot because that dead bandit is curious, but we never saw any sign of of the dude or dudette, you know, the the people to which that camp was assigned, Rasava. Unless, so the name Rasava sounds Kajit. And the one band that we saw was Khajiit. Just they're not named or anything, which is kind of strange. So it's possible that this camp was just a banded camp. But I don't know, it's just kind of suspicious. It makes me wonder if there's, if there's more to it, but it's anything else here. Let's go back this way. Um, right, I was looking at this spot, because I was like, how do I get up there? So there might be something up there. No guarantee, but might be. Also, I should be casting shield every so often. Shield and fortify uh, endurance, I think, so I can get those, get those stats up. It's so close. It's like we're kind of on the lip, uh, but not, yeah, not quite. It's like our ac our acrobat skills are pretty darn good, but we're like, we're not pro gamer, but we're, we're getting there. Oh, 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 there we go. Almost. I'm like mashing space, but there we go. It's tricky. It's like a bunch of, of lore that... Oh, Clavicus Val, that's a name I, I recognize, yeah. Yeah, because in um, in Morrowind, it's, I think, one of, the, one of the best long blades in the game. Uh, 
Clavicus Vile. I think you can, get a, you can get a helmet with his likeness. The Mask of Clavicus Vile. That sounds really familiar. Yeah, yeah some of that is, is somewhat familiar. Also, after all that hard work, there's nothing up here. I was so sure there'd be something up here, but that's okay. They can't all be zingers. That's okay. Let us explore. Ouch. Let's take some fall damage. Good old-fashioned fall damage. Let's head into the dungeon. Into the ruins. Take a quick... Not nap. A quick, uh, uh, not a power nap, a power wait. We're not gonna wait for an hour to get our endurance back. Or stamina back, rather. I don't notice another ru set of ruins. Now there might be artifacts that we could acquire to then bring back to that dude, Umbakano, I believe, in the Imperial City. Because he wants the... He wants the goods. And he will pay us handsomely. Oop. Right, it's just the, yeah, it's just the current holder. So it's, so as, it's, and I know Oblivion takes place well after the events of Morrowind, so it makes sense that it would have transferred owners. Don't do the, oh really? Cola Cola? Is this dungeon special? Let me let me, let me check. Um, Miskarkand, Miskar Miskarkand. Let's see if there's do a quick search. Um, Lich. Quest breaking bug and Miskarkand. People are saying it's crashing. Oh, there's a patch. Oh, I see. Okay. That's a shame. I was all excited to play it. Well, thank you for the warning, Bullocola. Yeah, I had no idea. Um, it's a shame because I would really like to check this place out. Um... Okay, well, we'll save it for next time. Or maybe not next time, but a, a future time. Thank you, Bola Cola, for, for pointing that out to me, because... Um, yeah, apparently there's... I, I didn't read much. I just kind of saw a couple blips. Uh, apparently there's a... There's like a, an, a, a, a big bad that you fight in there. That... And, and some thing happens when you, when you kill that big bad. And that can in some cases cause issues and it sounds like there's a patch that that resolves it but still it's it sounds like it would be worth you know avoiding if i can help it at least for the time being so we'll come back some other time martin okay i don't know who martin is but yeah it sounds it sounds like it's uh yeah it, it would cause some problems so we'll we'll hold off um i'll just try to remember that yeah we've got this you know, it, it, it shows... I wish I could, like, right-click and leave notes, like you can in Morrowind. But we'll we'll come back at some point in the future. Oh, no, no, don't feel bad, Boloko. I, I, I appreciate you telling me. That That's very helpful to know. Um, So, no, you, you were very helpful in pointing that out to me. It's like, gen generally speaking, you know, I, I try to avoid spoilers, but that's, like, that's not a spoiler. That, that was, like, you know, advising of a glitch. That, that's, that's more of a game engine mechanical thing that you know it's like hey i'm sure newbies like myself would fall into like i'm sure that's a it's a, a, a bit of a trap to fall in not an intentional trap but you know a, a technical snafu that probably snags a lot of people so I, I appreciate you giving me a heads up like i said we could just come back some other some other time maybe after we've probably after we've done more progress on the main quest because if it sounds like it it screws up some other quest We'll, we'll either come back there much later, or see if there's another quest that leads us there. Because I can think of some quests in Morrowind where it's like, yeah, if I go into this dungeon and kill this one dude prematurely, it can... In some in some cases, you know, mess some stiff up. Found a, found a gourd. You have now, would he know anything calls. about the... the camp here? Nope, nothing, okay. 
It's like maybe he'll know something about what happened here, but no, no intel. Acrobatics. I should probably level up, by the way. Six. Oh wow, that's that's impressive, Bolo Cola. I uh, I'm maybe close-ish to that many hours in Morrowind, but I maybe. And that's that's across many many years, so I'm. It's hard to know the. It's hard to know like the true answer, the true number. Because I, I played Morrowind before Steam was a thing. So it's hard to like know the, the full number of hours, but still, it's like I, I like to think I've I've done it done a pretty good amount of it, but still it's for games like for Elder Scrolls games, so there's a lot of content. A lot of stuff to to enjoy. Morrowind and uh, yeah, the, yeah, and, and Oblivion and Skyrim, yeah, it's it's a lot of game. It's a lot of game in these games. Another small set of ruins. Yeah, this is more what I'm usually seeing in places like this. These aren't really ruins, they're just a couple archways. But I love finding dungeons. I love getting distracted off the beaten path. It's it's a good thing. So we're getting pretty close to the main the main goal here, Kavach, is our our primary destination for the main quest, specifically. So of course, Bola Cola and, and anyone else who knows this game really well, you, you probably know what part of the main quest I'm happening upon, hoping to happen upon. But I have no idea what to expect. Everyone, everyone remembers their first time. Everyone's first time is special. Sometimes it's a little bit awkward, be a little clumsy, but special nonetheless. Look at the deer are trying so hard to get away from me. They don't want to jump off the cliff. I can blame them. So look at that imposing cliff. Very, not very impressive. Fighters Guild. Yeah, I've heard the Dark Brotherhood stuff is real cool and also like kind of kind of fucked up. Like I've heard people say like the Dark Brotherhood w without, you know, spoiling the specifics. I've had a couple friends be like, oh yeah, Dark Brotherhood. That's why the game traded him. I don't know what that means, but apparently there's some shit that goes on with the Dark Brotherhood and is deserving of the games I'm rating, which makes me curious. I'm very curious. being so fast and not blind. Well, the, the movement speed in Morrowind definitely is uh, different compared to this game. Yeah, Morrowind, in, in, in many ways, Morrowind is a very slow and methodical game, which I like, but it is, there are times where it's frustrating, especially early on. So, yeah, a game that's a lot more fluid, a lot more uh, more improv encouraged, you know, yeah, more thinking on your feet, more flying by the seat of your pants. Mortal Camp. It's because this guy is draining my speed. This, this gal, rather. Were you fighting a wolf? She was. Mortal. Is it because I'm going to deal mortal wounds to her, or is it because she is mortal? And she's dead. I guess we're all mortal at the end of the day. What was your weapon? You were slapping me with something. Oh, I remember one hammer. Oh, she probably had poison on her, that's why. Yes, the movement speed and just the overall overall gameplay speed of Morrowind is way slower. And again, I love it, but it's... I, I recognize and appreciate when people say, like, Morrowind was not their cup of tea. It's like, yeah, I get it. It's, it's clunky. Clunky and slow. As for being blind, though, I don't know if I had really any visibility issues in Morrowind. Well, oh, unless you're talking about the the blight storms, which were in some regions quite frequent and were kind of blinding at times, especially near Red Mountain. But um, to me, that was just part of the vibe. You know, it's like the, 
that kind of stuff was at times unpleasant but that also was like part of the world building so i i feel like that was i never tried to like avoid it just because it made me appreciate the clear days that much more but they are imposing at times The Magicka re- yeah, I kind of go back and forth on the Magicka region. On the one hand, I like it. Um, and it, it probably, generally speaking, does make mages more viable. Um, and less reliant on equipment or potions to restore Magicka or resting all the time. But also because I'm not resting as often, I'm not, I'm not auto-saving. Or I'm, I'm not, well, yeah, auto-saving as often. Of course, this game tries to autosave more often when you enter and exit instances, but not always, so... Um, th there's there's good and bad aspects of it. Like, not... There usually weren't too many times in Morrowind where the lack of mana region was, like, problematic. Um, it is a benefit that I appreciate in this game, for sure. But I don't actively miss it that much in Morrowind, but again, you know, spending hundreds and hundreds of hours in the game, you just kind of get used to it. Whereas if I would have started with this game and then gotten to Morrowind, I probably would have felt it a lot stronger. Because, I mean, for better or for worse, the game is kind of built around that expectation, but still, it's... There are times where it's inconvenient. Boots of blinding speed. Well, I mean, <laughs> that, that's one way to address the speed issue, but I, no, I don't really like using the boots of blinding speed. Even if I have, like, Night Eye or Resist Magic, like, a, you know, 10 or 20 or 30% Resist Magic, um, I don't really like using the boots of blinding speed just because it's hard, <laughs> it's hard to see, obviously. Um, I guess if you, like, spent a fuck ton of money and then, like, chanted, uh, you know, gave, like, an enchanted constant effect of... Yeah, resist magic like 50 or like 75%. That'd probably be a little bit better. Is that a motherfucking bear? Well, there were bears in this game. It's a little baby bear. I think. Actually, no, it's it's a it's a big boy. Never mind. It's just not like a giant bastard. He's a big boy. Got a lot of health as bears are known to do. Oh, I have seen the pelts. Never mind. Okay, I, 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 I'd forgotten bears were in this game. He's, he's not really pogging. He's anger. He's anger pogging. All right. Sorry, I'm fucking around. Yeah, boots of blinding speed are like fun to fuck around with, but nah, I, I, ne I never really use them all that often. Especially if you're not good with with light armor, because then it's you know the the, the armor the protection is is pretty crappy. It's it's like I feel I feel like it's it's easy to find better boots, more more useful boots in the game. But they they are fun to fuck around with those, it, and I guess it's good like if you want to fast travel, well fast travel manually fast travel, just you know point yourself in the direction you need to go and just hold W. It is kind of fun. 100% magic resist. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, yeah, there's exploits too. I don't usually go out of my way for like, you know, the, the goofy exploits like that. But yeah, that that's, it's a valid strat though. It is a valid strat. I myself don't utilize them too often, but, um, it can be a way around those, those kinds of wonky instances of equipment that's, it has like some horrible negative to it, like boots of blending speed. Oh, that's right. Yeah, if you cast like a sick levitation spell or an enchant and then put on the boots, yeah. That that is pretty that is a big strat for big speed, big travels. Yeah, that is a good one. I I don't usually go for stuff like that. Um rarely do I need to but yeah if you want to like zoom around the like if, if you want to feel like a boss 
Just like, have a character that can fly anywhere, basically anywhere. And have full visibility and, and you know, not have it spent, not have it used a lot of magicka. And just be a boss. Oh yeah, there there are so many ways to fuck the game. I mean, really, if if we if you want to really fuck Morrowind, what you want to do is you want to just go ham on alchemy. Because I mean, you know, everyone and their mother knows about the Morrowind alchemy bullshit you can pull. You know, you, you get some some fortify Ow. skill potions or er, potions, fortify skill at uh, uh spells. What am I trying to say? Fortify skill, um... Reagents. Alchemical reagents. And you use those reagents to make fortify skill potions. Or fortify at I guess, at net skill. Fortify attribute potions. Like, you know, fortify intelligence, wisdom, that kind of shit. And then you use those fortified attributes to make your alchemy skills better. And then you use those alchemy skills to make better potions. And then you use those better potions to raise your stats, which lets you make better alchemy potions. And then you singularity yourself. You, like, keep building upon yourself, building and building and building, until you have, like, you know, millions of intelligence points for in-game years. And you can do that with, yeah, strength, uh, uh, endurance, agility, like, you know, all of them, really. Luck. Nothing is sacred. No nothing is safe from this exploit. And you just alchemy yourself into godhood. And then you're- you're just untouchable. You're just an unkillable god. And it's ridiculous. It's like, it, it is- It is a fun time. Potion creation fit. Well, that, that's the thing. You have to- You have to first get your- Your alchemy skill or the governing attributes either trained up or temporally fortified up enough. Cause yeah. Cause yeah, that motion- that- that message is a message you'll see a lot in Alchemy and Morrowind. In this game too, but it's, I feel like especially Morrowind is pretty, um, pretty unforgiving along those lines. See, I like how the, the rocks popped in them, by the way. It's very sudden. So yeah, like you might need- it's- it's kind of hard to do in the early, early game without some either fortify or training help, but yeah, after a certain point you can just zoom to the moon and it's- it's fun. It's fun to fuck around with. It's just it, the tricky thing though is like it's it kind of breaks the game. And breaking the game can be very fun. But it also like takes away some of the tension of the game. That's one of the things I like. I, I like the the slower pace tension, you know. I I like the the fear of entering a vampire cave and being like, these guys might kick the shit out of me. Or, or you know, encountering a corpus stalker and being like, this guy could give me some incurable disease. You know, if, if I'm not careful. You know, I, I like I like that kind of danger. And in games like Morrowind, it's, it's kind of weird not to say, obviously, but... Yeah, I, I really take to... Navigating challenges like that, so it's like... And I also like that the game lets you break it. You know, in this game, there's more... There's more, um, what are they called? You know, you know when you go bowling and they got the little bumpers on the sides so that kids don't get gutter ball or, you know, not just kids, but like, you know, people, if they want to play with the bumpers and they get less gutter balls, it's like this game has more of that, right? It has more, it has more bumpers to prevent you from going in the gutter of, of fucking the game into, into making you an, an accidental god. It's got more, it's got more training wheels, you know, it's like it, it, it it's more guided. For better or for worse. For better, because it means it's a, you know, more uh, consistent gameplay experience. But for worse, because it means you can't fuck the game in funny, silly ways. So, you know, it's a trade-off. Like with anything else. The Gold Coast. The Gold Coast for the Gold Most. Yeah, that's the thing too, Void. I remember when I first found the, like, develop, uh, not developer, like the admin console, developer console in Morrowind and like discovering the commands. That was the first shit I did. I raised my strength to like 99999 and then ran up to like a cliff racer, smacked him with my sword once and my sword just it just exploded. Instant destruction. The cliff racer died but so did my weapon. So I was like, oh. I think if you raise your skills up a fuck ton, I think when your skills get higher, you the the lore is that you learn how to you to wield your weapon effectively. And it gets damaged less often, I think. 
as you're attacking enemies. That's the goal. So I, I think you can raise the attributes to, ma to match it, but still. Well, it's pretty silly. That's hor yeah, the horror element of Morrowind is something that I, 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 I remember fondly. Excuse me? What's wrong, bud? You all right? Did, did Timmy fall down the well? Is he scared of me? Did I? I didn't like commit a crime, and he's like running away from me, did he? Did I? And no bounty. Come back. Can we talk? He's he's too fast. Can't keep up with him. I just found like a thing too. It's not like a dungeon. There's no battle music. Beltor's Folly. Where are you leading me? I'm gonna get jumped. Perhaps this is my folly. Falling for this scam. Yeah, the horror elements in, in Morrowind would be uh, appreciated. We found Kivach as well. Dude, I... Can we talk? Come on, run while there's still time. The guard still holds the road, but it's only a matter of time before they're overwhelmed. Ertel, what the fuck, man? Hey, what's up, Nepsit? It is getting late. Yeah, I probably should wrap it up pretty soon here. All the people in Morrowind hit. Yeah, yeah, it's it's pretty easy to make a low speech craft, low personality character, but when you do, it's yeah, yeah, everyone's mean. Everyone's mean to me. Good to see you, Nepsit. And Whale, what's up, bud? Whale, you're- Oh, that's good. Yeah, you got some downtime, Whale? I know you said work was kicking your ass. Or maybe not kicking your ass, but it was, was very draining. So yeah, I'm, I'm glad you get some downtime, bud. Up for a jog. He's the happy mask salesman. Not very happy, and he doesn't have a lot of masks. But, uh, I was thinking maybe the postman from Majora's Mask. Yeah, the mailman. Yeah, yeah, exactly. God's blood. You don't know, do you? Deidre yeah, he was out by those ruins night, that I want to go back there for. Were glowing portals outside the walls, gates to oblivion itself. Oh, this is some main quest there shit. There was a huge creature, something out of a nightmare, came right over the walls, blasting fire that swarmed around it, killing. Go and see for yourself. Kvach is a smoking ruin. We're all that's left. Do you understand me? Everyone else is dead. Was kicking your nah, I don't want to phrase it like that, but I knew he said it was real fucking draining. Hopefully, some downtime is reach is like restorative. Gets to get able to recharge it your was batteries, bud. Sabli and Matthews, some of the other guards helped some of us escape. They cut their way out right through the city gates. Sabli and says they can hold the road. No, no, I don't believe him. Nothing can stop them. If you'd seen it. You know! It's fucking Lovecraftian horrors, apparently. Here before it's too late. They'll be here any minute, I'm telling you. Run when you can! So to be clear, he, he like ran up to us and then ran away. Now he's running again. Alright, so clearly we have stumbled, we, we have stepped into some shit. Um, however, yeah, so yeah, so this is Kavach. That explains why Kavach was never on the map, the way that you know, Anvil is on the map, and and Skingrod is on the map. So we knew that that was the place to go, but we didn't have like an actual plot point. So Perhaps she's still in Kavach in a basement hiding. I sure hope so, bud. So we're gonna wrap up pretty soon here. And I'm curious about a few things. There was a there was a, a folly, a folly of Bellator apparently. Works kicking your ass in episode though. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry, bud. Yeah. Oh no, I appreciate you too, Nepsa. No, you're and you're right. I, I'll be wrapping up pretty soon here because it is getting kind of late. Oh, he's come back. Round two. Except he's running around us. I think he's. Oh well. Okay, there, there is a wolf. You have you have reason to be fearful of this more immediate danger. <laughs> the little legs flopping around. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm with Ogaz on this. I think he just enjoys running. Stop for a jog. Because at first I thought he was, uh, he was running from us. I was like, did I do something? Do I smell? Is it something I said? Why do people keep giving me that look? I swear I showered last month. Why are people being so weird? All right, so here's the folly. So there's this one, and we've got it on our map. However, there was one other thing I wanted to see. We were on, we were kind of at an overlook, and I saw it looked like shelves of a maybe not ruins, but some kind of formation that caught my eyeballs. Is it over here? It was we were we were running. Yeah, I think it was more further this way. So we ran a bit. Oh, it is smoldering. I see the fires. Oh, and wait, hold on. It's not a fire at all. Enhance. That's not a fire at all. He did say there was a portal into oblivion itself. This is the equivalent of... Uh, in Breath of the Wild. When Zelda's like, Link, you're our only hope. I will hold Ganon as long as I can, but please, my strength is... is faltering. You must help us. And Link's like, you got it, fam. Let me go fish for... For dozens of hours. Let me go find Korok seeds and fuck off. And Zelda's like, Dude, I've been doing this for literally a hundred years. Could you please? And then Link's like, Uh, yeah, just five more minutes, he says, as he's like surfing down a mountain on a shield. This is the this is the equivalent of that. I'm I'm like, oh wow, uh Satan's penis has emerged from a portal to hell and he's slapping everybody in the face. Alright, uh yeah, I'm gonna get right on that, fam. I'm I'm on it. I say as I explore dungeons and fuck off. Uh, by the way, Chrono, uh, Chronoa, good to see you, bud. Yeah, God's blood. Yeah, it, it is kind of fun. The, um, the, 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 uh, what's, what's the word? Interjections? The, the exclamations that the NPCs will make is old timey sounding. By the way, we all got some Crash Bandit. Oh, nice. The, tr the, the double trilogy, the hexology then between Crash Bandicoot and Spyro. That sounds nice, man. Did you play those games back in the day? Because I did not. I, I was a Nintendo guy, so I, I sadly missed out on a lot of very cool PlayStation games. So, packs like that are really good for me, for people like me, where it's like, oh, I can get caught up after years of being neglected. The scroll thing. It's a... Uh, oh, um... Equip a scroll you have two or more of. Then before you leave the inventory, drop something. Will it like duplicate it or something? Because I would, I would probably rather not do like exploits if I can help it. I mean, it, you know, it's one thing if I stumble upon one accidentally, but I, I, I would, for for like a casual blind playthrough, I would I would rather not like intentionally employ glitches to give me the upper hand. Although that is that is good. No, that's that's like an option that you can like fuck around with stuff. But oh look at look at this guy just sauntering by. Hey man, do you want to talk Speak, about citizen. Mega Satan that's over killing things? Oh, that's not even an option. All right, all right. See you later. Farewell, citizen. I was thinking maybe he would, you know, offer some intel. Because Kavach is right there. You think he would give a shit? He's like nah. Like that's someone else's problem. Right, so we so let's do this. What I'm gonna do is we're gonna queue up, and next time we're gonna explore Dasic Moor. Then next time after that we'll explore Bellator's Folly, and then we'll get into Kavach, and then the real Kavach. So let's do this, friends. Let's go ahead and say I'm gonna save right in front of what I presume to be a dungeon. We'll explore it next time because it is getting late. It's getting late, sees. We did some good progress, explored a lot of dungeons, and just kind of. Just kind of poked around, explored, found some new equipment, which is nice. My shit is very damaged, <laughs> to say the least. I need to get my shit repaired. Maybe there's a dude in Kavach who can help us out, because... Look at this, look at this armor. Oof. All of my shit is fucked. My weapons are not too bad. And I've got, like, and I've got another sword here, so, like, we're not... Defenseless, but we're, <laughs> we're pretty beat up, so... So next time, we'll hopefully find someone to... Get us all, all juiced up.